called a special meeting of the Niles Maine Public Library District Board of Trustees to order. It is 7.30 p.m. on Wednesday, May 2nd, 2018. Please take your roll. Karen? Here. Carolyn? Here. Dennis? Yes. Diane? Here. Tim? Yes. Kathy? Here. Mm -hmm. Linda? Here. And please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Congratulations to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, does anyone register for public comment? So no? No. No. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So this meeting was called for the purpose of discussing the proposed 2018-2019 budget, and we came to the daily meetings to discuss other items on this agenda, uh, or vote on anything really, uh, but we're here to discuss the budget itself. We already talked about the budgeting process in previous meetings, but now we have an opportunity to go over uh, the proposed budget, which has been uh, given to us a couple weeks ago, and uh, before we do that, uh, I'd like to know if uh, you, Susan, or Greg have any additional information for us uh, before we start the uh, session whereby board members can ask questions. We do. Thanks to hand out, and then Greg is going to have a short presentation. All right. Thank you. Well, there's two things, right? Okay. So are we going to go right into the PowerPoint at this point? Okay. Should we turn the lights off? Is what I'm asking. Uh, Susan, do you want to go right, or did you want to have some discussion? Let's I think we'll have some initial comments and then. Uh, okay. Just an initial question I have is we're being given a uh, budget, first presentation to the board. Is this the same as what we've seen before? Is there other differences? Uh, we've made uh, some small changes. All right. Well, you can let us know what those are when we're going over. Yeah. All right, so if, um, if we look at the um, document that looks like the document we passed out previously, okay. um, uh, I just want to note a couple of changes um, that we made. All in, um, I think the changes that to less than $5,000, uh, but I do, in the interest of full disclosure, I do want to make sure that the board is aware of them. Uh, and uh, under materials, uh, the Which current, page? Uh, under materials, Which page? Which page? Uh, somebody think it looks like page three. The one that's, uh, okay. yeah, one of nine, one of the periodicals. Page three of nine. Uh -huh. uh, the periodical line, uh, that was reduced uh, by uh, $10,412 to uh, 32900 so, uh, okay, that matches last year, is that correct? Yes. Correct. Just catching a mistake. Okay. Okay. And uh, uh, the following page. Um, uh, one second. I think it's on page five, actually. Uh, on page. Uh, on page five, we increased uh, supplies uh, by five thousand dollars. So sixty-seven fifty is the current amount. Correct. Yeah, that's the new amount. Well, wait a minute. I have sixty-seven fifty on the old version too. Oh, don't tell me that. Yeah. Just saying. $5,000 
special development change, second line from the top. Okay, so supplies. Yeah, but that one up 5,000 now was supplies. Oh, I see there. Yeah, yeah, minus there. All right, yeah, I see there. Um, okay. And uh, that one up 5,000 dollars to account for uh, uh, some con uh, development that we left out. It's 5,000 dollars to the Harvard uh, okay. Institute. Well, oh, wait, for professional development? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's actually going going down, right? No, no, no. He means it's going up from the budget that he decides to. It was ah, 30000 Okay. It right. was 30000 uh, 894 okay. before. Now it's 35000 it. Um But the supplies didn't go up then? No. Okay. Library supplies on page four, second line for the time. Okay. I confused my supplies. They don't want, they don't want $5, and that went up $5,000. And that was to account for um, a large order that we do annually in the um, April time frame to buy uh, supplies for uh, uh, for the holds. When you get a when you get a hold, you get it wrapped with a with a sticker. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have to we buy those once a year, and it's four thousand dollars. It's like forty five hundred dollars or thereabouts. So uh, I we say like five thousand dollars. And then the last line. I, uh, let me change, was on page nine of nine. That's repairs and improvements. That went from 60,000 to 65,000. And that was to account for uh, uh, some, uh, some hardware that we, uh, that we need to, to install on the uh, lamp posts. I'm sorry, but why was that on nine of nine? Yes. Comparison improvements. Okay. That's about the top third of the page. All right, thank you. And it was for hardware, did you say? Five thousand. Like an hardware you have put there? Um, uh, so, uh, uh, we have a, uh, a reduced uh, banner program that we're considering. Yeah, I know, because we were considering that as part of the... Well, that was, much more, that was much more expensive. Yeah. You know, that was about 15 or $18,000. So Slide it in there. And I resent that comment. Would you like to change it? No, no, I don't want to change it. You're going to slide it in there anyways. We voted against doing the banners. You're going to slide it in there now. anyways under repairs and improvements. Okay, Dennis. Wait a minute. Five thousand in hardware. And then they're going to want to do banners and change those out at hundred dollars per banner. All right. I'd like to allow Greg to finish. Can I just ask a question? No. Is this hardware just or banners? It was hardware. It's under that hardware. It's under that line. Okay. Come in or something. So banner. So we're not talking about banners. We're talking about hardware. Nobody said anything. Nobody said anything. No, we're talking about hardware right now for the land posts, and the hardware will be used to put banners on in, in the future. Um, can you please let him finish so we can go on with the meeting? I was just trying to help her understand. So those are the changes. Uh, Greg. Yeah, I did. Uh, yeah, uh, good point. Um, uh, one of my formulas uh, wasn't uh, summing all the way to the bottom on page one, and now it does. So if you were checking the math uh, on the first copy, then um, you, you would have found the error, but now the error is So the total revenues changed under which 1819 budget, you're saying? 1718. Uh, okay. It didn't, uh, the sum did not include the uh, last two months. Uh, okay, fine, thanks. Okay, any other changes? No, no other changes. Um, okay. Just uh, some of the other documents uh, that we passed out. Um, the one with uh, seven columns. That is... That is... Um, uh, comparison between first of all income statement consolidated uh, yeah. 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 instead of yeah. yeah. the so first four columns do uh, two things. Um, they annualize or try to project I should say more accurately the uh, year end balances. And uh, then it compares it to the uh, current year budget, the 17-18 budget. 
uh, to give you some idea of uh, where we're going to end up. Of course, it is a projection. Uh, there's three months of uh, educated guesses in the uh, in the projection, so we, you know we feel like we've done a pretty good job, but it may most likely it'll be different. That's a nature of projection. Uh, the last three columns uh, do two things. Um, it shows the uh, current it shows the current budget under discussion, the 1819 budget, and then it shows a comparison to um, the 1718 budget, as well as a comparison to the 1718 projected. Can I ask um, so some additional information for me? Um, is that the question about this page? Is income it? statement consolidated, yes. Um, do we normally see three months projection or do we see things monthly? I think this is additional information that you're going to see. Additional or consolidated information. I thought the information on our income statement is usually by period. Now we're doing it. Yeah, three-month intervals. Well, see, this time hasn't occurred yet. So well, what we're no, trying no. to do is forecast what it'll look like right. in six Right, so we're not forecasting by period. We're now forecasting by several months. Is that what well, we're this, is a, this isn't a change to yes. the way we're doing things. This is just uh, the you'll get the normal financial yeah. statement in the monthly packet in a couple of weeks. This one is just yeah. for your... Uh, just to give you a little bit of a sense of are we going to be over or under for the year based on projections, which of course it's the nature of projections that they're guesses. But it's just we have nine months of solid information and then we have three months where we're just trying to see what yeah. is probably going to happen. Um, Tim had thought that that might be helpful to you all. So Okay. Yeah, yeah um, that's great. So we will, of course, as our regular meeting, get our annual, or rather our monthly statements as we always do. Uh, this time, but yes. this is yeah. just looking at those nine months and projecting it forward yeah. so that it's a best educated guess we can come up with at this time, I presume, is to what our expenditures will be for the current fiscal year. As well as, By the time, as, well as the revenues. As well as revenue, uh, when we get to June 30th of this year. Right. Okay. Um, and then, uh, and then uh, uh, we also passed out a copy of the uh, draft tentative ordinance. Uh, I want to remind everybody that the first uh, step to get the clock running, so to speak, um, is to pass the tentative ordinance. Uh, at that point, uh, it's available for distribution to um, anybody of the public who makes, who makes an inquiry. Um, we post in the, in the newspaper um, that, you know, that we're uh, having the uh, budget meeting, I should say the budget hearing. On uh, June 20th, um, I believe it's the 20th, right? Uh, which yes. is uh, right before the, uh, the regular meeting, which uh, at which this will be considered for passage. Um, and uh, uh, again, it's 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 not a commitment to it Thank as you. much as it is, you know, a formality to get things from Okay. Um, the other document is a copy of uh, tonight's presentation, which we'll get into shortly. And, um, and what's coming around is, uh, is an organization chart, which uh, essentially, uh, by name, considers the first three levels of uh, the management team um, of the library. And then down below each supervisor is a brief summary of uh, what goes on in that a particular department. Uh, it can't get confusing when you consider that we have three departments, IT services, tech services, and digital services, which sound like similar. <coughs> they sound very similar and, and could be mistaken uh, uh, for synonyms for the same uh, department, but they're very different departments. Mm -hmm. so, we're so, trying, okay. so we're trying to uh, draw a distinction between those, uh, between those departments. Thank you. Are we so, expecting to <coughs> to see people slotted in underneath these people? The, well, we have a version of the org chart that does have the individuals that are in these apartments under that, but we thought that this might be useful, more useful to you in this context, just to understand what the um, 
what the general organization of the library is, what the different departments yeah. do. And no, this is good. I like yeah. it. I just, I, it, I, I, you know, it'd be nice if we, we could get that additional information about who. Yeah, we, we have gotten that past. I yeah. do have a copy of it. I didn't yeah. have it with me, but I've got it in my book. But changed. it's changed. Because and, and, that's what it I changes do. continuously. Yeah, I know. Yeah, patron and, services. Because at the last meeting, door. at the last meeting, I, or the meeting before, I asked for. Oh well, I thought this might be more useful. I, I certainly. It, it's very good. I like. It. I just thought I'm, this might be clearer. I like it, but at some point, you know, if we can get an update, let's check. Now, is this um, correct in terms of the reporting? No, it's, they were reporting to me. Okay. So that's, Cindy is the project manager, so she handles all these big projects for us, okay. like the CCS migration. But she does not have direct reports at this time. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you for the chart. Uh, obviously, we have the tentative ordinance. We have, as he pointed out already, an updated first presentation to the board, budget. And we have the seven column document that shows projections. So, unless you have further comments on those documents, I presume the next thing we're going to go over is the PowerPoint. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. All right. And we have a handout of PowerPoint too here. First slide. Um, I just want to remind uh, we want to remind everybody that uh, we use a service-driven model uh, to build the budget, and uh, currently uh, the library provides a, a number of, uh, of services. Um, I'm sure that there's probably more than, uh, than what actually is listed here, but uh, we try to make it as inclusive as possible. Um, but when we're thinking about when we're thinking about staffing and we're thinking about resources, these are the things that we're actually uh, thinking about as we uh, as we go through the process. I want to start at the top with uh, the 1819 um, revenue, which uh, is on page one of nine. A um, couple of things um, that we try to do here. Um, what we try to do overall is uh, tie our revenue to, uh, more accurately, to our receipts and yields. Uh, a big item here um, is the uh, TIF districts and the impact that the TIF districts had on us. Over the last three years, it's been increasing by, oh, I don't know, about $50,000 each year. It started at about a $100,000 uh, impact, uh, 141 the, uh, the year previous, or the year after. And then uh, 199 this uh, this past uh, tax year, and um, you know the importance about that is is that our levy doesn't change, but the way the resources that come into the county and the way they're allocated is is changing based upon increased um, valuations of property within the TIF district. If you remember, when you set up a TIF district, you take the Equalize assessed valuation of the of the property in the district, and that's your baseline. Until the district is retired, you only collect taxes from that baseline EAV. As the EAV increases, it draws more of the levy, and that extra money above the baseline actually goes into the district to fund projects within the district. Uh, each district can have up to a 23-year life. And uh, uh, there's no requirement that it be 23 years. It could be over in five years if they accomplish their goals. Um, uh, but you know, who's to say on, uh, one way or the other? So uh, in the uh, current uh, budget that we're under discussion, on line one, you see a, a decrease in taxes. That's because I've tried to handicap the, uh, uh, the impact that the TIF districts are going to have on our revenue line, our property tax revenue line in the current year. Okay. 
Um, next uh, item of note for under revenue is our per capita grant. Uh, it increased uh, by about $27,000. Uh, we were getting, and as a matter of fact, we just got the check uh, in the last uh, week or so. It was 44478 and it was for the, um, it was for this current year, and it has to be spent by the end of this fiscal year. Um, we got, at this almost at the same time, uh, a notice that we were awarded uh, $71,605 uh, for the upcoming fiscal year. Um, and it's not uh, exactly sure, we're not exactly sure when we'll get, we'll get those funds, uh, but the state being the state, maybe we expect it a little bit later than sooner. Could you help me understand what is a per capita grant and why is it increasing? Um, it increases at the whim of the state. Okay, and, and what the state does is it, um, is it puts a, a pool of money together and then awards that money based on the individuals in the service area. So if our so, service area grows, yes. we get more money. So That's correct. So if we're taking on a bigger responsibility, that's yep. meaning. The $71,000 represents an increase to $1.50 uh, per person in the service area. And as a matter of fact, uh, I believe it was three years ago, we were getting a similar amount yeah, at $1.50. Uh, so it's, 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 it's fairly increased per person, not more people. Right. Okay. Based on that census, so when they get new census numbers. Oh, okay, that good. Change. Good, good. Thanks. We're at the same number for 10 years. Okay, good. Um, investment uh, income, we also we increased that to 100,000. We had 80,000 in this year's budget, but it, it looks like 100,000 is more realistic. Where, where, do we, where do we get our investments from? Uh, the U.S. government and and uh, anybody that's FDIC, FDIC insured up to uh, 250,000 dollars. I'm not sure if I'm answering your question. See, no. I think money in our banks. Yeah, yeah, do we have yeah. Or well, yeah, so U.S. government implies, you know, T-bills and T-notes. So, so the library bought certain things, or yeah. is somebody invested, with, you know, something? I'm just trying to understand yeah. what investments we have and, and how, how we're getting the money. So I, yeah. I'm new to the library. I haven't mm -hmm. been here, so. Um, so uh, I work with a broker, and he... Uh, uh, he brokers um, certificates of deposit. Okay. Uh, we invest no more than the FDIC limit. And uh, we invest in uh, all sorts and manner of banks. If, uh, uh, the good thing about pursuing that type of strategy is if the bank goes under, FDIC steps in and right. you, know, you, barely, you barely lose a beat. Uh, for some of the more short-term things, uh, we invest in uh, T bills okay. uh, because you know we get money twice a year, uh, approximately half the money, a little bit over three million dollars, and it seems to be a waste to let it sit. I in, agree. In a money I just market. I had no idea that was your you know one of the functions that you were doing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's why I, I, that's why I was asking. I wasn't you know right. trying to criticize. Yeah, Greg's right. given us discussions. It may have been before you were here. I think yeah, but I think before you were here, Dennis, about um, it, it, the investment it, strategy yeah. and different uh, mm -hmm. uh, types of investments we make. Okay. And I, I remember periodically seeing a list yeah. of the types of investments. And, yeah, and um, it's not something we go over every month. But yeah, I'm not. I'm not interested. I just yeah, okay. it, it helps to understand. I, I had no idea that we were doing that. It helps and to understand. It, and I may ask in the future too, short term. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I mean this interest income. Really very helpful in terms of budgeting, balancing our budget. But, uh, so, okay, so you're projecting a little more income from mm -hmm. the investments. No, mm -hmm. it's good. Uh, passports are up to uh, 35,000. Um, uh, at this point, we've done uh, a little over 500 uh, in a little over four months. So, you know, things um, are ramping up nicely. Uh, it's hard for me to make a prediction at this point what the actual curve is going to look like over a 12-month period because what I don't know is the total market that's available to us and, yeah. and what the natural 
limits and boundaries would be overall. So, uh, so we're forecasting a thousand for next year. We're not going to hit a thousand this year. We might hit uh, seven hundred or so, or uh, depending on on how traffic. Uh, uh, and those are all new, because I know you get paid for new, but mm -hmm. not re, you know, re up. So. Okay. Um, uh, just. Just to remind you, we encourage anybody that's doing renewal to do it on their own. Um, they don't need us to be involved in that. And um, I think uh, all but a very, very few have uh, taken that to heart. Uh, if they insist, we'll put it in the package and send it along with everything else. Um, the book sale, uh, we had it 16,000 last year, and this year uh, we scaled it down to 10,000. It just didn't seem like uh, the books were going out at, uh, at a rate that justified a higher number. And we also decreased our pay for print to uh, 20,500. Uh, again, you know, just looking at the kinds of traffic that, you know, that we're having. And, and what's pay for print again? Copy Somebody wants to make a copy. Mm -hmm. okay. What about or, sorry, printing from the uh, or from print the printing from, machine? Yeah, yeah, print from a computer downstairs yeah. and they want to print something. Okay. They're, they're, you're charged that you have both cards, do you still? Yeah. I mean, we use just cards where you put money on it. Yeah, we're actually um, we're actually changing two of the visitor printers downstairs to uh, read credit cards. Oh. Um, <laughs> You know, which cool. is, yeah, which is much uh, much more convenient. Yeah. It's one transaction instead of having to load up your card and then transact, mm -hmm. or being in the middle of a print job and finding that you're short. Yeah, yeah. Uh, people will appreciate that. I think so. Yeah. I think Very so. much so. But uh, we boarded the equipment and that should be coming soon. And there's no worries about any security issues. We, you know, that I'm sure that you know, you're know you making a transaction on something with your credit card. We, we would naturally, of course, all the library security is in place to mm -hmm. take care of that. I mean, it, I mean, no more. It's no more than any other store yeah, or something. Yeah, no more than yeah. what American Express does. Yeah. Or, or so, um, in terms of the expenditure side, we have uh, uh, some uh, major themes uh, that we'd like to uh, bring to the board's attention: uh, health benefits, retirement. Uh, strategic plan and investment physical plant are the uh, are the major themes. Uh, with respect to uh, health benefits, um, for the first time in uh, in my career, I've seen uh, health benefits decrease, the cost decrease. Uh, they decreased between uh, two point six and four point four percent each. Uh, each tranche, uh, each type of insurance is, um, behaves differently and is uh, costed separately by uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield. So if you read uh, below the second bullet, you can see that uh, single coverage decreased 2.6% to $939. We have 27 employees on that. Um, single plus spouse, uh, so just a couple, uh, that decreased 4.4% to just over $2,000, and we have seven employees that are taking advantage of that. And family coverage decreased 3.2%, uh, and that's just under $2,400, and we have two employees who are taking advantage of that. That's yearly? Yes. Oh, uh, no, 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 that's uh, monthly. Monthly? Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's our class. Our class. Um, so, uh, Greg, when I uh, read this in the proposed budget, I thought it was a mistake. <laughs> and um, can you tell me, what do you think is causing a decrease? Which I've never seen either. Yeah, so the way that, the way that um, health insurance gets rated is for, um, uh, for very large companies, uh, most large companies are self-insured. They have a stock loss maybe at $200,000 per case or something like that. But um, uh, most of them are assessed as a single group. And especially with that, you know, with that particular group's uh, experience. So if you have hearts and cancers and things like that within the group, it's going to drive your costs up. If everybody is younger and you're just doing maintenance, it's going to keep the cost low. Okay. Smaller entities like us, um, we're what's called community rated. 
So they take all the large companies and they pull them out of the community. And we got some, you know, large ones. We got Sure is is one uh, large group that's uh, in our community. We have Coca Cola. It's another, you know, big one. So they'll pull out Sure and Coca Cola, and then they'll look at everybody else as a group. So you're okay. saying like Sure and Coca Cola are they self-insured? Most doing? likely. I I I'd be surprised if they're. Okay, so they pull them out of the pool, they look at everyone else, and they look at smaller everyone employers else. like us, yeah. and then what? And uh, and then they come up with uh, they come up with a, an initial rate. Once they come up with an initial rate, then they'll look for reasons to adjust it up or to adjust it down. Um, perhaps we've had uh, lower experience of, of hearts and cancers, which are the two big ones. Yeah, if you mentioned, uh, and and that that would play very strongly in terms of us lowering our, uh, uh, our rates. Um, the, uh, uh, the age of our census uh, may have migrated up or down. You know, so maybe we've got some retirements, we've mm -hmm. hired some new people, the new people tend to be earlier in their careers, um, which leads to a lower average age of the census that they're insuring, and that will bring the cost down. I've seen people are invincible as we all know. Yeah. Um, and I'm, you know, and I'm, I'm sure that there's other uh, forms of, uh, of adjustments. So, so for those are the major ones. Um, the initial, uh, the initial uh, uh, pitch from Blue Cross was a decrease of about 0.6, and we pushed it a little bit harder, and we got it down. We got it down to as you see. Um, all in all, it's going to have an impact of approximately fifty thousand dollars on the uh, on the uh, interest rate. Yeah, it doesn't change throughout the year, right? No, it's a no. Yeah. So um, all insurance is managed on a calendar year uh, for, for like deductibles and things like that, but the um, uh, but the contract for pricing. Is managed on um, any kind of year you want. So it could be calendar or fiscal like that. It doesn't have to be June, it could be April. You know, it's, it's all over the board. And it's so, the same with deductibles and everything. Yeah, it's, okay. a, it's, it's yeah. the same. So, it's apples to apples. Okay. So what we do is uh, we have we had a plan and we were in, in um, well, we're always in danger of losing the plan. If we make any significant changes, and if we make significant changes, it throws us into, you know, a group of new plans which are priced different. And um, the, so the grandfathered plan gives us some greater predictability going forward, and uh, some uh, uh, some stability. Um, I, quite frankly, I was so surprised uh, because I was just reading a Price Waterhouse study uh, that cited medical inflation at six and a half percent. So, you know, generally the insurance tracks with medical inflation. So if medical inflation is six and a half percent, we should be seeing similar types of uh, increases in our insurance rates. Well, that's I want to not congratulate good. the staff on yes. healthy living and extent that cut down medical expenses. Greg, can I ask one question about your statements about um, all insurance is calendar year based, which means when they give you a quote for going from January to December, so only half of that will come out of a particular year's budget? Okay, so the operations piece of insurance is calendar based. So on um, January 1st, your deductible is reset. Uh, the amount of uh, counting against your deductible and all of your claims experience is reset to zero. And then it accumulates throughout the year until December 31st. Um, we, however, have a June 30th year end. So what we do is we contract for that pricing starting July 1st and going to June 30th. So, you know, um, and so it's out of phase by six months. I see. The okay. operations against the, the uh, uh, pricing. So the figure that's in this budget, that's no, for, it's, it's 100% then because you're going from beginning to end of the fiscal. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, thank you, yeah. thank you. Um, retirement, the next budget theme. Um, the uh, trend, the downward trend for IMRF uh, contribution rate continues. 
Uh, for 2019, it's going to be 5.3%. Uh, to refresh your memory, uh, when, when we uh, looked at IMRF initially, they came out with an 8.12%, which was valid from August of uh, 2016 until the end of 2017. For 2017, Uh, for 2018, excuse me, um, we got a rate of 7.3%. Um, and now for 2019, we got a rate of 5.3%. So Carolyn, this is uh, more in line with the question that you asked about health insurance, in that we have, we have a rate for calendar 2019 and a rate for calendar uh, 2018. Okay. So for the year, we blended the two together the and and, res and that results in a blended rate of 6.305%. Oh, okay. That was going to be my next thing. Okay, so that's what we used. Um, why did this happen? Well, uh, paying off the uh, unfunded liability uh, avoids uh, roughly 7, well not roughly, but exactly 7.5% per year being paid on an outstanding balance of about $2.5 million. So that cost goes away, which, norm, which um, lowers our what's called normal cost. For every hour that you work, uh, IMRF says that 5.3% or, or thereabouts in this current iteration goes, uh, goes for funding retirement on that particular hour. Um, if we had a bigger, if we had a big uh, unfunded balance, that number would be much higher. As a matter of fact, back in the, um, during the period of adoption, what IMRF had told us is if everybody had taken the, uh, uh, bought all of their cash service, our rate would have been about 13.7%. So it's a far cry, you know, it's, uh, it's a far cry, eight, uh, eight and something, uh, to, uh, to get down to 5.3%. Uh, at 5.3 percent, if the entire year was 5.3 percent, uh, the retirement cost would be approximately $150,000 on the projected salaries. Um, if you remember, in the year of adoption, we were forecasting about $184,000 to continue the ICMA uh, plan that we had. Mm -hmm. and, um, uh, so the interesting thing is that it would have cost a lot more money to cover far fewer people than what we're paying to cover more people. Okay. This year the number is about $180,000, which is still below, uh, at the blended rate, mm -hmm. okay. is still below the 184 and, and change that we would have, uh, we were forecasting in 2016-17. And then, of course, this is a, a reduction on the expenditure line of a little over $500,000, $550,000. Of course, uh, there was $500,000 in there for the last chunk of uh, unfunded liability that we paid at the end of 2017. Yeah, so if you remember, we paid five hundred and thirty-two, but we had budgeted five hundred. All right. Uh, okay, fine. Should we go ahead to the next page? Uh, just one more comment. Okay, fine. Uh, I just got the um, I just got the uh, actuarial report from uh, IMRF uh, for the last year end, which is uh, 12 31 2017, and it actually shows that we have a surplus now of about 220 something thousand dollars, um, which. Basically, there's a testament to, you know, uh, you know, trying to make this zero is almost an impossible thing because the big thing that you don't know is what the market is going to do in a particular year. Last year, the market did great, but we have we didn't have any tools to take what the market did and translate that into an impact on the library, or it's nobody, nobody else had that uh, ability either. Um, because there are some decisions that the IMRF board makes in terms of allocating uh, surpluses like that. So, you, you know, you kind of have to have all that information 
uh, which wasn't available to us by the time we made made that uh, uh, made that decision to uh, to put that money in. So we carry a two hundred twenty-seven thousand dollar balance uh, to the positive side, which means we're about one hundred five percent funded. Um, and uh, you know, nice thing about that is we get seven and a half percent on that money, along with the other monies that are. Or does that lower our rate further in the yes. future? Okay. Yeah, it has a it has a downward pressure on it. Okay. And plus, we're interest earning interest in that. Yeah. Okay. Pretty good return. It is a pretty good return. Yeah, I'll take so, that how much, so how much are we allowed to put it in? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a serious question. I think we're also we get seven and a half percent. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I've not explored that. You so. know what? I'm wondering if that's like us who had yeah, our right. money. We can go up to a certain percentage of our money. Of your of our, of our salary. Yeah, it's ten percent. Ten percent. Correct. Anywhere from yeah up to ten percent. Is it here? No, I don't know. However, oh, and that's Europe. considered an after-tax savings. Anybody who's IMRF can do that, and we get uh, we get a certain something. It's always the plus. It's always the plus of the IMRF. Yeah, hmm. they don't do that with the other one. With TRS. I, and quite frankly, I think they'd have a very tough time finding uh, an entity out there with less than 5.3% of uh, contribution rate. Most of them hover around you know, 10 to 12. Because uh, yeah, I remember the original forecast was that it would be higher. Yeah. We were, but know, we did the right things. Mm -hmm. So it was a really good idea to get the trustees in who voted for repaying the money. That was a wise thing to do, right? Okay. Really working. Those trustees that voted for that. Good job. All right, so the next page, strategic plan. plan. What about those that didn't? Number one. Number one. Okay, are we going to so, the next slide? Probably. So next slide, um, uh, we're, uh, we're trying to do some things around the uh, strategic plan uh, that the board uh, voted on uh, last year. Uh, first thing is to uh, uh, get more cardholders, so we're, so we're investigating doing a, a library campaign of some sort. Um, we have uh, budgeted uh, approximately uh, uh, $5,000 for, uh, uh, for such campaign. Uh, we're not exactly sure what that campaign is going to look like, but we're investigating things like uh, uh, you know, direct mail, to non-cardholders with a card, perhaps, with a limited, limited use card. But, I mean, that's, everything is just good for discussion. Um, we're, uh, we're getting smarter on, um, on how our mail is delivered so that we can make the best and highest use of that money as well. Um, yeah, so, uh, I don't know, there's, uh, I think there's five rates of service, from first class all the way down to uh, nonprofit, give me a bunch of stuff and I'll put it in every mailbox, no addresses or anything like that. Um, we feel that that in a lot of the larger apartment buildings that, that the mailman is not putting it into the boxes, but rather putting a stack right. that he feels is appropriate for the size of the building on a, on a counter and leaving it to the employees, I'm sorry, to the uh, residents to, uh, to pick one up and use it. We're talking about chapter one. Chapter one, yes. Okay. So, um, you know, so uh, we're you know we're trying to get smarter on how that mail is delivered too, which is actually part of a reconstituted chapter one. Can I ask you a question about the library card treatment? So, what's the return on investment of having more people with more cards? I, I go to Macy's. I, I have a Macy's card and I have a shop. Not a it's a return on their investment. They have invested in the library. They should have the ability to use the library. They have paid their tax dollars to the library. They're foolish not to take advantage of that. And I feel that it's your responsibility as trustees to get as many of the, your taxpayers as possible with library cards. And then they can be using the databases and Clipster and all those things. So the idea is that you think that they just don't know about the library? I think many of the people, they say that the people up in unincorporated Maine Township, if that was a town all by itself, it would have the second most diverse population of the entire state, second to Chicago. 
So many of those people don't come from countries that have libraries. They're not familiar with it at all. And some of, some of them are very recent immigrants, so they just aren't familiar. But they're still paying their taxes. Yeah. So, so I think we have an obligation to try yeah. to let them know that this is a thing that they're paying for, and, and it could be helpful to them. Yeah, if we have more cardholders up there, then it can kind of show a real need for having other services up there, too. Good point. Thank you. That certainly is a possibility, but it's... <laughs> Well, Dennis, they're taxpayers. Yeah, yeah I understand. But, I, you know, I, I grew up as a little boy, poor poor upbringing, didn't have a whole lot of money. And I'm telling you, I knew exactly right where the library was. Yeah, but you probably, yeah, you know, had parents who were born in the United States, right? Yeah, they were. Yeah, so, you know, they, they knew more about how to find things. And I, you know, knew about the library when I was little, too. I was fortunate to have a parent with me there. But, I mean, the type of services type of services that are available in the library now are so much more advanced and different and diverse. I mean, I still don't, you know, even though we've been on this board for a number of years, I still don't know everything the soft library offers. I'm still surprised on occasion to say, oh, we can, you know, you do this, so you can you got a brochure for that. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, there are chapter one, and it does, you know, tell you as much as you can, but the library does so many more things than a 1960 library did. I, I just think with social media and everything going on today, uh, schools, people being in school, if, if people don't know what a library is, where a library is, uh, <laughs> and, and they're in school, well, you know, you I, know I, I guess maybe these people have just come across the border, they're not in school, they're living at home, and they have no clue about what's going on with the library. Well, you know, I think children have an advantage being in school because they may have a school library, and the library, the school may bring them to this library. But there's people like me who are older people, and I, you know, when I went to library, when I went to school, libraries were a very different thing, and oh, okay. so I find that I, you really have to work to find out everything that our library does, and you know, if you're an older person and you're not in school, I don't, I don't think the question is about knowing what's in the library. It's that the question is, do they know libraries there? Well, and there are countries where they charge for library services. Yeah. Or, or and the services are very restrictive. Or is that what you I, yeah, I, I lived in France for a year, and I was going to take my kids to the library, and then we had to buy our car. It, it, it doesn't occur if, if, a, if their budgets are tight. They might not want to bring their kids or their family to a place where they have to say no to their uh -huh. kids. They might think you have to pay. So, uh, can I just ask a question about this? Mm -hmm. I take it we'll be discussing this later and, you know, what your plans are. I mean, I'm right. sure there's a lot of plans. Because you're going to come up here, then you're right. absolutely right. Yeah, we don't need to get into the details. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, I'm just saying, we're, it's not cut and dry. We haven't even gone there. No, Just want to make sure. Okay, so I'm sorry, but just mention. Please go ahead. I apologize. No, no, I didn't mean that. I just want to make sure I was on the right So the second thing that we're looking at in terms of the strategic plan is reconstituting Chapter 1. Uh, we've been doing uh, surveys across um, all of our uh, uh, programming uh, for several months, and you know some of the things we found out are kind of interesting. Uh, we found out that people do refer to Chapter One um, with uh, things like uh, Twitter and uh, Facebook and uh, posters uh, inside and outside of the library and. The sign on the corner being for much further down the line. So, you know, uh, chapter one is important. Uh, what we also uh, found out, um, or we're starting to find out, is that a 90 day shelf life seems to be a little bit too long. Um, if you think about it, um, how often uh, do you get a piece of mail and have it sit on your counter or taped to your refrigerator or on the coffee table for 90 days? Um, shelf life of uh, most magazines is 30 days. Sometimes it's seven. Uh, if you're looking at uh, weeklies like, uh, you know, like People, for example. Um, so we're, you know, one possibility uh, might be that we do chapter one more often and have uh, a smaller uh, footprint. Um, so instead of 16 pages, maybe we do it every other month and have 12 as an example. Um, but that would uh, that would it take increased uh, printing? That would take uh, increased uh, postage, uh, which is why we're trying to get smart on postage. So we're not, you know, just throwing uh, uh, good money after after bad. If 
you know, if they're just throwing them into the uh, uh, vestibule of, a, of an apartment building or something like that. Um, another, um, another item that we're doing is uh, celebrating the uh, 60th anniversary of the library, which uh, was the spring of 2019. Okay, but let's say April something. I think it's exactly like a year from now. And uh, so we're looking at producing, uh, you know, we'll look back over uh, over 60 years and creating our own exhibit, uh, as well as, uh, you know, having uh, events and uh, uh, programs uh, surrounding that. We're also looking at uh, other ways to uh, engage with, uh, with our service area, our community. Uh, we're and we're also uh, finally looking at the uh, wayfinding and the signage uh, inside the building. So, uh, you know, can we do a better job of uh, helping patrons find what they need uh, without having to engage a person on every single floor as they uh, as they navigate the, uh, the structure? So, the the community engagement piece uh, could you help me better understand? What their, what, what well, their that's part are. of the strategic plan, and it's it's vague there because we haven't decided exactly okay. what we're going to do. But it was for the second year of the strategic plan, which is what's coming okay. up. Okay. And we just know that that there are several points under that that we need to be looking at, and so yeah. we've got to put something in there, yep. but we haven't yet figured yeah. it out. Yep. It's for the coming year. Okay. So it's just kind of just like a, a placeholder or mm -hmm. plug in addition stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, finally, we're looking at an investment in uh, physical plant. Um, we've, uh, we've bid the chiller. Um, once we award the bid for the chiller, uh, the board decides which vendor we're going to use. Uh, it's probably eight to ten weeks before they even are able to build and deliver the piece of equipment. It's uh, sort of like building a car. Um, exterior caulking and painting. Uh, most likely uh, will be uh, will be fall projects uh, as well because uh, a lot of the uh, vendors have already built out their uh, built out their uh, spring uh, calendars and we really don't want to drape the place with uh, uh, drape the library with uh, scaffolding and and other materials while we're trying to run summer reading programs and things of that nature. So. Um, uh, you're probably wondering, we did the bid opening uh, just about uh, three days ago. Uh, we had uh, uh, ten people, ten firms bid on the chiller. Uh, the, range, the price ranged from 136278 for uh, the caulking project. We had uh, four bids uh, for about 79000 to uh, 170. Uh, and then for the painting, we had uh, bid a low bid of uh, 25, 8, uh, and a high bid of 111. We had five bidders uh, there as well. And right now, what we're doing, uh, we can't we can't blindly accept the lowest bid. We have to make sure that the scope is appropriate and gets the job done as as we like to. As a matter of fact, for the painting project, uh, we found that uh, some of the uh, some of the bidders had uh, missed an entire part of the scope oh. and didn't bid it. And you might say, well, why can't we just give them, you know, give them a chance to up their bid? They already know what the competition yeah. is, and yeah. it would take them out there. Yeah, we get so. so right now, um, uh, how, how could you miss a page or, <laughs> or consistently? Uh, yeah. Stop. Well, uh, oddly enough, one guy um, never came to the building, never talked to Dave. Uh, never um, even drove by. He looked at us from uh, Google Earth yeah. and uh, made his estimate based on that. Okay. Uh, but yeah, but there was a significant part, uh, portion, uh, as, as you can see, that uh, that he missed. So uh, uh, Dave is spending a, uh, Dave and I are spending a tremendous amount of time trying to level the bids uh, to make sure that. Uh, the pricing is complete to make sure that if there are any exclusions, we're aware of it, so that we can uh, present uh, a package to the uh, to the board for their consideration at the May meeting. Uh, I just want to warn you that 
in all likelihood would have coughing and fainting. You may not have chiller uh, at that point simply because uh, there are a lot of variables that we're chasing down. But I think Dave's making some pretty good progress with some of the numbers at this point. So maybe we'll see. Um, uh, reading on in uh, the investment and physical plan, uh, we have a project to reconfiguration, reconfigure the data center on the board. Um, the data center has uh, grown uh, by happenstance, and uh, what we would like to do is uh, make sure that uh, appropriate uh, precautions are taken to make sure that the air conditioning is appropriate. Uh, we have a uh, we have a dry uh, uh, fire suppression uh, system that's appropriate and that it's uh, contained uh, and that we have appropriate workspace uh, as well. Um, right now it's, um, it's not as functional as we'd like it to be. Uh, we're also looking at remodeling uh, our bathrooms. Uh, there are two spots for that. Uh, there are two bathrooms, single stall bathrooms I guess, or uh, down on the first floor in the, in the kids' area. Um, those, those bathrooms are in bad need of, um, of some remodeling. Um, and we would primarily be looking at a pretty simple remodel uh, in terms of uh, keeping the fixtures where they are and so forth so you don't get to get into new drawings and, and uh, new disciplines and so forth. But you know, cleaning them up and, and freshening the tile and so forth. I don't think they've been done since they've been built in uh, was it? 1997, so I, I think it's uh, probably about time. Um, we're, also looking, <laughs> we're also looking at remodeling the bathrooms uh, up on the third floor, um, but we, uh, we haven't fully committed to that process yet, uh, uh, so we may or may not do that as part of, uh, as part of this upcoming fiscal year. Uh, in, in all the repairs and painting and updating um, of the exterior, one of the things that um, that is in bad repair uh, that we haven't did yet is the uh, entrance portico. So where you walk under and it's you know you have the you know the barrel vault and and the columns and stuff like that. Um, it's in uh, it's in pretty bad need of uh, roofing. The uh, the roof is leaking. And um, it's a standing seam, seam copper roof, which means that it's pretty expensive. We're considering other materials and so forth, but we're not exactly uh, uh, sure where we're going to end up with that in terms of making a, a suggestion to the board. Uh, but certainly the underlayment needs to be replaced, um, and the, uh, uh, the entire structure needs, uh, needs to be painted and, uh, and redone. Uh, we're also looking at uh, uh, a security and access project. Um, we have a number of blind spots um, throughout the library. Uh, as we become aware of them, what we try to do is put a camera out there and you know so that we can survey it. Um, is that the exterior you're talking about? Interior. 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 So, um, and, and in some cases, um, we'll put a camera up that, doesn't have anything going to it. Um, you know, we had uh, we had a number of uh, materials that were disappearing. You know, people take the cases and they break them apart, and throw them away, and stick the CD in their pocket or notebook or whatever. And it doesn't go off. Uh, sometimes it does. They're very sneaky. And sometimes it doesn't. Depend it depends on what the media is. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, sometimes the uh, sometimes the RFID is attached to the case. Sometimes it's attached to okay. the uh, yeah. to the disc. Uh, but we put up, you know, interestingly, we put up an old camera uh, that had no power and no back end uh, to it, and uh, the activity subsided. Of course, they might have gotten all the good stuff. So. Yeah, that is true. In in addition, what we did is we took some of the higher value stuff and we put it behind the desk. So. You know, like some of the things in some of the big box stores, you know, you, you say, I'd, I'd like an iPad. But you don't get an iPad, you get a card. And when you check out, they bring, yes. the, I, they yes. bring the device to you. So, so we've done some of that as well. Um, we're also looking at replacing our phone system. 
Um, I think our phone system is going on uh, 10 years old. Um, it's a uh, hybrid type system. So it's not a PBX and it's not a voice over IP, but you know something uh, kind of in between. And uh, uh, they just don't make the parts anymore. So if we fry a board or something like that, uh, we actually, uh, you know, Rich spends a, an amount of time making sure that we have spares. And sometimes that involves uh, finding them on Amazon, sometimes on eBay, um, trying to make sure that, you know, that we're never completely out in terms of our phones. And then uh, lastly, um, we're looking at repairing and uh, resealing uh, the parking lot. Uh, I think we've done that, what was it, about three years ago, Dave? Four, three or four, four, four years ago. Um, and uh, it's fading quite a bit. Um, generally speaking, what happens is the company will come in, identify uh, weak spots, uh, dig those spots out, lay in appropriate uh, underlayment and uh, top coat and so forth, and then reseal and restrike the entire parking lot. And then, uh, and then we start the cycle all over again. Can I ask just one question about the bathrooms? I thought, maybe not recently, well, I thought not too long ago, didn't we agree to, or didn't you need to remodel the bathrooms because they needed to be handicap compliant? Did we not do that? I think you we, you did the downstairs, the big bathrooms down by the large meeting room were part of the construction project, so maybe that's what you're thinking of. Okay. But we had also talked about getting a family or a single stall up here to, in case we had transgender patrons who didn't want to choose oh, one see. or the other. Okay. So that was maybe the other thing. Okay. Yeah. All right, got it. Okay, thanks. But it just kind of got pushed back and it's not the highest priority and it hasn't happened yet. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am? I, I also want to say, I, I think just to speak in favor of having a single stall up here is that the only other single stalls are in kid space. And that means that people who want to have a private moment will walk into kid space and we yeah, we don't really want really un, yeah, un, uh, un tethered grown ups sure. our kids in that space. So. Good point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, are we done with that page? Uh, Other items of note? Um, we're looking, um, we constructed the budget using a 3% annual raise program. Uh, according to the state of Illinois, uh, CPI again is at 2.1%. It was 2.1% last year, and uh, it's 2.1% again for uh, uh, for this current year. Um, if um, if we set the raise program to zero, um, the the delta would be approximately uh, fifty thousand dollars less. So in, ter in, in terms of one percentage point of a raise program, you're looking at something like $17,000. Uh, the other thing, uh, the next thing that we did was uh, we set our materials budget at 12.1% uh, of the total budget. The uh, uh, state guidelines uh, say that 12% is uh, what we ought to be considering as a library to uh, keep the materials fresh and uh, relevant for our patrons. And uh, lastly, uh, programming has uh, has been reduced uh, significantly. Uh, I don't remember the number up here. Uh, but if you, look on, uh, if you look on page uh, four, about the middle of the page, uh, programming uh, has, uh, has decreased by almost 29,000. But I should say that I do plan to pay for, for some programs out of the capital grant. So I don't, I'm not, not having the programs I'm paying for it and for my profit. Well, this right. one, I'm sorry to hear this. Um, I, I took some money out of the program budget uh, mm -hmm. that would be levied for, and I thought I would pay for it out of the per capita grant, which is, I try not to put anything in the per capita grant request that is a must-have thing, but program things are a little bit more fluid, and I think that uh, we might be able to pay for it better that way. Okay. All right. Can I ask um, one question? Sorry. Yep. Um, just what do we pay in the cash for the per capita? 
per capita grant fees, media, kinds of things. So we had uh, one year during the construction project that was all early liter literacy things. Um, but what I've written the grants for the last few years to be more open ended than that. So I'll say like technology supplies, so like the filament for the 3D printer, or um, some kind of open ended things, having um, uh, hiring people to do temporary jobs instead of hiring staff is another one of the things that I have in my grant. So like having summer interns to help with summer reading, things like that. So um, programming and materials are the other thing that can come out of that. Okay. All right. Uh, thanks for going through that PowerPoint presentation. Uh, right. Yeah, I'd like to, to turn our attention to the budget itself. And um, what we have here is a nine-page uh, document, and the original version, and the slightly amended new version, which we're given this evening. And what I'd like to do is look at each page and give each board member an opportunity to ask any questions they might have about that page before we move on to the next page. And I'd like to give each person an opportunity to ask a question before any board member asks a second question. So let's turn to the document entitled Niles Main Library District 2018-19 Budget, First Presentation to the Board. And of course, the very first page is about revenue and revenue projections and how it compares to the previous years. Um, so I'm just going to go around the table and ask if anyone has any questions regarding the revenue uh, side of the budget. Uh, Tim, I'll start with you. Uh, if, you can, if you don't have any, just pass. Yes, uh, yes I don't have any All questions. All right, Linda? Yes. Carolyn? Okay, one of the questions was per, grant, per capita grant, and but Susan already answered that. We're going to use it for a portion of programming. Mm -hmm. And then I had a question um, about fines. Um, I think I'm confused. I thought we were no longer charging fines. No, we still charge fines. It's, yeah. uh, the the about amount that. has been reduced over the last couple uh -huh. of years. It's much less. I think it needs to make like fifty thousand dollars, and we certainly don't get that. Okay, but. so fines are. I guess I'm thinking of when your books late, but maybe fines have to do with books or that are that lost. Or no, items. you're right. No, fines is when your books are late, and we store your DVDs more likely. And, okay. Um, and we still are. Um, we still are charging people for that. We talked uh, about it every yeah, time. You may remember, Carol, I mean, we have we talked about that. that. Yeah, because yeah, we've talked about some other libraries have gone to a fineless system. And okay. they just don't try to collect fines anymore. And we discussed it, but we didn't take any action on that. Okay. So we still do collect fines as a panel. Okay, and fines is really for being like, now what if you lose something or break it? That's another another mm -hmm. type of? Yeah, that's the lost books lost. here. Okay. Oh, I see. So it's not exactly revenue, really. It's just that they broke it and they're and replacing they it, but, they say, but you have to put it somewhere. So that's And what can I ask a question about that? Do we have a service that handles that for us, or do, does our staff have to engage with the customer and get, or with the patron and, and get these things replaced? I mean, how do we do that? Well, they can if they choose to order an identical copy of whatever it is that they've lost. And every once in a while, they'll do that. Um, and then it just gets processed back in technical services like any other new item. Um, but more often, they just pay for the item. Actually, oh, okay. Yeah. And, and a lot of the time, then they find it so the next week. Just, so. Okay, so we have to do internally. Okay. Yeah. Because, for example, I, I'm guilty of this. <laughs> with okay. grandchildren who tend to lose the stuff oh. and then you find it two or three weeks later okay. after you've paid for the book then you bring it in and then you have to wait for the board to approve you getting paid oh, the get money back, money back. Uh, okay all right well thanks that was the only question that i had all right Dennis. you have a question about uh, the miscellaneous revenues you know, we're budgeting that thirteen hundred dollars where would the miscellaneous revenue come from? The donations? Or, sometimes. Um, you know, sometimes it's uh, somebody buys a pair of uh, earbuds, or uh, periodically somebody buys a library card because they're in the district. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it's all 
one off type of uh, transaction. So, you know, I mean, I could explode the view and, and show them all, but I don't think it really has. You know, we'd be talking about like a 27 hour item. Huh? Okay, and then uh, as far as grants, uh, I see that we only have a thousand dollars for grants, and I, I just took the liberty to go out on the Google and Google grants, and I noticed that there's a lot of opportunities for grants, and I was wondering why uh, why we don't pursue more grants. Well, we we do actually get quite a few, and we just uh, our team librarian is particularly good at finding grants for us, and she just got another one. But we don't budget for that because we don't, we can't we can't guarantee it. You just don't know. It's very erratic. So uh, we do go for some grants. Some grants are sort of not worth the amount of time and effort that goes into both getting them and then the telling them what you did with them end of it. But we certainly do keep our eye out for grants. We just don't want to budget for that because okay, you just so, never know. Okay. Yeah. I, I didn't realize. I, I yeah. thought well maybe you just pursue the law and that's you know, no, that's all you're gonna. Going after, or you don't have anybody no. that does that type of work. Uh, yeah. No, I think the thousand is for one of the placeholders. Is that right, Greg? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, actually, then it's if you look at our our um, projected revenue on that that page, that seven column page, we've got thirty five hundred coming in this year. And then we budgeted it for a thousand, so that's kind of okay. lends to that. But it's a good question, and if you ever see a grant that you think would be appropriate for us to apply to, you certainly send it my way. And then, and then I, I just wondered, uh, and it's really something uh, that I would uh, think would be helpful for everything is just to, uh, if we have budgets for 2017, 2018, and 2018, 2019, but we don't do anything with, with actuals. So, you know, the actual monies that, that were used. So, you know, it's not so much for this first page, but if we get into the other page, you know, we can compare. Uh, a budget where we say, oh, well, we're going to budget for all these items, and uh, but the actuals of what was spent that year, uh, you know, I think would be helpful to have as a column on, on the, uh, the the budget. So, so Dennis, are you saying what we've actually spent up to the up to the first nine months? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. So do we have that here on this other page? Yeah, yeah that's the seven column presentation. So would that shows, be uh, uh -huh. the first uh, column? The second column. Uh, well, the first column actually shows expenditures oh, and activity through March 31st. And okay, uh, the second sorry. column shows uh, what the uh, projected uh, totals would be at uh, June 30th. So, what is the first column? Actually, this is, oh, like March this is what you have off this of the... This is the actual. Yeah. It's more this is projected, this is actual. Mm -hmm. See on the top it says projected mm -hmm. on this one? So like for revenues, we've received almost all of our tax revenues for Correct. this year. I mean the money's come in by now mm -hmm. from the treasurer's office. So we might have a little bit more uh, tax rev property tax revenue trickle in, but probably not a lot more, right? Yeah, we received another $40,000 in, uh, uh, in April, uh, which quite frankly was a surprise. You know, it's unusual to, you know, the payment mm -hmm. patterns over the last few years to see money about that after March. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Okay, all right. So, I, okay. Um, yeah, I guess I'll have to look at it a little closer because it, it, I, I just found it, you know, I thought it would be convenient to get it on. Well, you know, uh, Dennis, we did just get it right now. Yeah. So, uh, but that first uh, column tells us what our actual revenue is up to March 31st. And then second column is projected through the end of the year. Okay, um, so I will go on then to Patty. Patty, do you have any questions about revenue? The, the only question I would have had is pertaining to we had talked prior about the possibility of the, they were saying with the state of some kind of freezes and um, really that's more when we decide if we're going to 
later in, in the fall, isn't it? When we do. You mean property tax freeze? You mean the yeah. property tax extension law? Yeah. I know. Yeah. Is that or the yeah. tax caps? Is that what yeah. you're thinking about? Yeah. Where they were going to freeze stuff so we couldn't raise stuff in that. Yeah. And, and those and that's do, more for those do apply to our apply to our levy. In the fall. Yeah. Um, but that's not something we have to, uh, to worry about directly yet. deal with when we're looking at the budget. I mean, certainly indirectly it does affect us, but that uh, certainly comes into play. Uh, yeah, when we're so, lobby. yeah, that's so. Okay. That, so that doesn't affect us right at this point when we're talking about this stuff that won't fall. Okay. Uh, Dan, any questions about revenue? Um, I just have one question about the bulk sale. I think we've talked about this before, but we pay taxes on this money. We do. So uh, this yeah, could we pay sales tax? Shows the after tax before. Yeah. Tax. No. Another one. That's all. Okay. Uh, as for me, I did have a question about uh, why our property taxes were going down so much, but I think you discussed that during uh, this presentation to me about uh, primarily due to the tip. Yeah. So that's uh, why you anticipate that property taxes will be down. Okay, all right, so I think we've gone over to the revenue page, and therefore I'd like to turn to the page. We can have other questions once we've gone around, right? Well, do you have anything else on revenue? Yeah, yeah, okay. so on the, on the book sales, so okay. I'm just trying to understand that. So for the books, uh, book sales, we're pr proposing that we had budgeted 16000 and up to March we had eight, and we're assuming at the end of our year we'll have ten. So we actually budgeted more for the book sales. So is it, is it, is it, am I reading that right or not? I think, yeah, yeah, I, think what, what, I think what I'm seeing, and correct me if I'm wrong, Greg, is that we budgeted that we would get 16000 from book sales this past year, 1718. But as it turned out, it only looks like we're going to make about 10000 That's correct. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we're only budgeting, we're only expecting 10000 for next year because the book sales just aren't pulling in that much money. Okay, so so the sixteen was the initial one, but we only got eight. That was last. That was this current year. Yeah, we got eight through uh, nine months of the year. Right. And you're expecting to to get to ten by the end of the year, correct? If the rate, if the sales right. rate continues at the, at okay. the same. Uh, so and based off of that, so that's why you're projecting for yeah. the upcoming budget of ten. Got it. Thanks. Okay, any other questions on revenue? All right, let's go to page two, which begins the expenditure section, and page two specifically deals with uh, salaries. So I want to go around and give people an opportunity to ask any questions about page two. And I just want to do this without flipping back and forth a lot, but rather we're all focusing on the same general topic uh, mm -hmm. at the same time. So I'll uh, do that again. And Tim, do you have any questions on uh, yes. salaries? And I will move to Linda. Do you have any questions about salaries? No, I think everything was explained. All right. Carolyn, do you have some questions about salaries? Um, actually, yes. I noticed that under the um, descriptions that, um, for example, um, Division supervisors, there's a list of, I think these are the departments. Well, it looks like they've listed either departments or the different types of positions that fall under these grade levels. Correct. And what I was wondering, um, I mean, that's a great breakdown, but would it be possible for you to provide a department list of these respective positions from each salary line item? and include the employee's name, their position, and whether they're full-time or part-time, so I can get a view of who's in what department and better understand how we're staffing them. Because I, I could use this information just divided by our either departments or areas, whatever it's called. Because this so, still doesn't give me, you know, um, an accurate idea of what we're doing in the departments. The fact that we have 26 grade 4 librarians sort of doesn't really register in terms of where they are or what hours they're working. So Karen, are you asking what 
amount each person makes? Is that what you're asking? I'm or? asking for a couple things. To provide um, these different levels of positions or employees to be divided by or separated out by departments. Just list their name, their respective positions, like maybe in one department there's a library assistant or there's um, a cataloger. I mean, I wouldn't know that. And then what their actual salary is and if they're full-time or part-time. Well, I have seen in the past a chart that shows how many grades were under each department. I seem to remember that chart. Right. We have, I mean, that's probably that. what this chart is that they gave us. I mean, it's no, no, there was, no, there was, there was my this, I'm there looking was for a church. specific list of employees by department that would indicate these different positions. Okay. Patty, uh, you that have was this chart right. there. That, right. Uh, that's Me, the yeah. one that I recall. I, Carolyn, can I make a statement from what I remember from your question is that I thought there was some legalities of RSS getting individual names. Oh no, not at all. That is, it, it is public record. It's just, you know, we have had the discussion about whether the budget should be arranged by department and my understanding was that the board decided not to do that. So that's why we didn't present it in that way. Um, that, yeah, that, that is correct. Uh, well, that's what I'm saying is we've gotten that uh, information in the past anyway. No, we've never gotten it. I no, would like to request this. And is well, there, could you let me know if there's a problem? It would just help me to better review our budget. Well, I think we do, we have received that. Uh, Diane's holding it right now. And it tells oh, you no, exactly how many positions are in mm -hmm. each department. I'm and asking, can I repeat my question? Maybe I didn't, wasn't clear. Please what provide names? a that? department list of oh. respective positions from each salary line item. Include the name of the employee, their position, full-time or part-time status, and their salary. So that's a lot more specific details than, than that general list. So that's what I'm asking. Well, let me ask um, Diane, who's holding it right now, or maybe Patty. Or pass it down and let her uh, It seems like every piece of information that you asked for is on that list, aside from the individual name of the employee. With the names of their the the money. Oh, it's the money that takes it. But I think I've seen another one that tells me um, that information. I, I thought I saw another chart that had that. I know we had a chart that was more than one page at one time, but this is the one more recent one that I have that I keep in my bag. I'm not sure. I can understand if we want that information for whatever reason. However, for the budget purposes, it's still salary plus the 2.1% which is a 3% overall. So for, uh, for budget purposes, I don't think that information changes anything. Oh, absolutely. It would give me a much better idea of what's going on in the departments. I'm not really finished with my request, but I do need to, instead of having generalities and blanket pieces of information, I need to be more specific with what I'm looking at before I start making decisions Mm -hmm. uh, on how to proceed, and yes, I, I really do need that. Okay, well, I hear you say that you have a number of requests. We'll uh, go through with any questions we have, and at the end of the meeting, we can look at your request. I would like to and, address this question and now. At the end of the meeting, we can, well, we can't get, even, even if the entire board decided that you uh, should get, that we should get that information, we can't get it right this second anyway. Can I just make so, a statement to help No, you me. have to let me finish okay, my go ahead. statement. Okay, Sorry, keep going. And that is that we are going to go through this, as I said we are. If you have various requests, just in terms of information you want in the future, at the end of the meeting, we can have the entire board decide what we want the staff to do in terms of gathering information. Um, but we are going to go through and Anyone can ask any questions that they want to ask at this point based on the information that we have uh, presented before us. So, um, do you have any other questions based on the salaries page? Um, Dennis. Um, the, uh, um, I, I, I was looking at the chart here. I just want to make sure I understand it first. It's on 
page two. Uh, I'm seeing the 2017-18 budget, 2018-2019 budget, favorable, unfavorable. And as I look at the, the totals, it looks like it goes up. I think it's going up by 101973 Am I, am I wrong? Oh, you're right. Oh, okay. So, so uh, to me, to me, that sounds, you know, like a lot. Uh, I, I, uh, my, my comment and my thought is, is that uh, I understand that there is this 2.1% uh, uh, line that people would like to achieve. At a minimum, I, I quite honestly think that it should be uh, frozen. Uh, I think an additional 100, and, well, well, let's call it 102 just for easy purposes. I, I seem to think that that's a, a lot of a lot of money. Uh, and that's my opinion. Uh, I have another question about payroll on Sundays, and there's no law that says that people need to be paid time and a half on Sunday. There is not. So it's the I, custom here, but that is really is. Yeah. So 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 there again, I, uh, I I know a lot of people that work in many different jobs where they they, they work on Sunday. They don't get paid that time and a half. They work on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So, so again, that that's something that you know, my opinion, <laughs> and uh, just being honest, uh, I think needs to change. Uh, uh, I think when we're doing a budget, when it comes down to it, at some point, that ten thousand dollars for adjustments needs to be pulled out. Again, my opinion. Would the adjustments would be, for example, when? you were deciding my raise last year and you yeah. decided to pay part of it as a bonus instead of a raise, that's where the adjustment is yeah. that yeah. comes out yeah, of well, there. Yeah, I, I think if we take that adjustment out, then we don't have to have that decision. Then you don't have any more bonuses. Then you don't, I mean, then you're increasing yeah. your base instead yeah. of giving a one time, I, which is actually I think, more money. I, I, I'm not saying you have to increase your base. So, um, uh, and then substitutes, I have a question about substitutes. The, the number for substitutes, uh, $15,000 this year versus $28,000 proposed, you know, maybe for next year. You know, I'm trying to understand what's meant, what you mean by substitutes. Is it, is it one individual? Is it multiple it's, individuals? You know, we have a number of people that can step in in an emergency situation, and then we, in this line, this year we have um, maternity leave being covered that I wrote about in the memo that went with us. Yeah. We have an acquisitions clerk who's going out on maternity, and we can't do without an acquisitions clerk for four months, or three months, or whatever it is. So it is budgeting for that. So that it is higher this year for that reason. For instance, the person's going to be what? Like it's just it? blank yeah. the salaries of expenditures. Acquisitions. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Sorry. The acquisition so stores order all the materials yeah. in the library. So I'm, I'm sorry, I, I was getting yeah. acquisitions clerks order yeah, everything that is being you know the books, okay. the magazines, everything. So okay. if somebody, if we lose half of the staff of doing that, then we will get very no, very shy. Is there only one acquisition clerk in the whole library? Two. So in one's on maternity leave for three one months. Will be on maternity leave. So in the subline, we put a little extra, not a little extra, we put enough to cover. Most maternity leaves we cover just with other staff members stepping right. in, but this particular position is has too much specialty. It, it's, you don't want people messing around in the keeping track of funds and things like that. We don't, you don't want people just swapping in on this. Purchasing position? Yes. Purchasing all the library materials, the books, the DVDs. The, and they can't be covered by our business office? For oh gosh, no. No, no, it's completely different. No, that's the. Pardon me. It is. Uh, it's in the same department with the catalogers. Yeah, it's the first step. It's where things get ordered and attributed to a particular fund code, and it's completely different sure. software oh, right. than what I they totally use. understand the process, yeah. but usually when someone's going on maternity leave, you plan for that. We are planning for that. And, that's and what we're doing. And she leaves the department. 
in such a way that an employee in the in the library who is experienced in purchasing or from the business office would be able to step in. I mean, we don't always have to bring in people from the outside. We have we have some qualified people here, and I can't understand why we're always. Well, my point is, we do not have that. any qualified people here to cover that particular position. So she's we've had, like, for example, Green Services Green. just Green. had. Um, maternity leave, and they covered that within the department. We didn't ask for any extra help with that. But in this particular position, it's too specialized. The software they're working in is too specialized, and it's keeping track of a lot of money. You know, the materials budget is a significant part of our budget. It needs to be tracked carefully. Okay. And things coded to the right things and received properly, and mm -hmm. all of those pieces of that. And we just got this new software, so we're just now getting used to it anyway. This is part of the migration that took place last month. Okay. So, so, so a lot of that information really helps understand that the need for that other sure. person, and uh, I think uh, uh, that helps me uh, better understand that. Uh, uh, it'd be nice if you know there was somebody that could just slide over. Yeah, would, but I understand the fact it's new software. Yeah, it's, you know, you know, and, and it's you're, you're, you're dealing with your materialized budget, so. Just the one last thing was on the payroll library, and it looked like uh, is it, did someone leave in that? that We're moving the head of IT. It's actually should not still be listed here. Head of IT is moving from let the grade four to grade three. We're making it that a supervisory position. Head of IT is moving to the supervisor line, right and that was in the memo as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, it just evens out, the money is More or less going, or I guess it's a higher pay grade, is that it? It is, although he has, it, yeah, he's, he's he has, was already, he's been here 20 some years, so he already is at the top of the previous pay grade. Okay, all right, uh, Patty? Um, yeah, my only question, which, bear with me if I don't explain it correctly, is, Pertaining to this this sheet, yes, ma'am, um, where it says 2.1 grades, and then it says something. The way I interpreted it, an overall added up to three percent. So right. does that mean some people will be getting more than three percent? Some would be getting more. Some would be getting less. Everybody would get the 2.1, the cost of living increase, and then the amount additional for merit varies depending on the review that they got from their supervisor. And the last sheet of the review is a list of reasons why they should get a merit increase, and there are many things on that list that they could do that would increase their chances of getting a higher raise. Not, not, I mean, not a super high raise. It's, we're talking pretty small raises here. Okay. Um, some pretty small salaries to begin with, but... It's something anyway. Okay, I was just curious because, you know, I know we gave that privilege to you, you know, we said here's 3% and you thought it would be beneficial and we agreed to that. I was just yeah. not uh, in the understanding that some of them would be getting more than 3. So, yeah. Some gets more than 3, some get under 3. Okay. So, uh, Penny, we did that last year too, is that what, you, right. is that what you're referring to? I don't... Don't I remember that. Yeah. I don't remember that some of them would get more than three. That's oh, what right. I'm asking. Mm -hmm. Well, even down to three percent. I understand yeah. it yeah. 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 but I just, you know, yeah. okay. Like we had somebody mention short-term memory. That's <laughs> my short-term memory. Okay. Did <laughs> you have any other questions? Oh, no, I know. That's it. Thank you. All right. Dan, how about you? Is there okay, just you uh, a quick question uh, about the I substitute. Uh, two things. Sure. Where do you find these trained people, and how do you determine what their yeah. rate of pay is? Uh, they almost always are people that have retired or gone to work at another library, and they come back to Moonlight. Mm -hmm. So they generally get whatever pay rate that they had before. So they already know our procedures. Our, many of them are in youth services because that's the busiest desk most of the time. And they need, they need more uh, people stepping in, especially during the summer. Where it gets too down there. Okay, so you pay them to what they were paid. What they were getting before. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the day. That's all.
Okay, all right. I had um, two quick questions. One regarding Sunday workers. Have we been paying uh, Sunday workers time and a half for a while now? Uh, for as long as I have worked here, which is 20 years, there was, uh, I think, a one or two year period when, before they got the, they did the operating referendum, where they had built this shiny new library, but they didn't have enough money to pay for some of the stuff, and so they, they cut, they cut all sorts of things at that time. They cut some hours, mm -hmm. and, uh, and they cut the Sunday time and a half, and then they restored it when the operating referendum passed. So it's still sort of an established practice. Very much so. Okay. Um, the other question I had to do was regarding the uh, head of IT position. Yes. So I understand that would be coming out of the payroll librarian one line. Yes, and that and should just have been that should have been removed from the text there. It already was removed from the money, but it was I just it just got left on. Today. All right. And so and, and this is going into the payroll division supervisors? No. That's, that's correct. Not. Is that, is that yes. right? Yep. All right. So, but I don't I see this. What confused me is it says he would be a grade three position, but where does grade that, three are the supervisors? Okay. So I just didn't know that was called grade three. Yeah. At the beginning of each one of these lines, it says oh. payroll grade one, payroll grade two, and right. how many of them there are. Oh. Yeah. That says three, and that there's eight of them. Correct. I see. Yeah. Okay. Grade. They are grade three. Okay. Eight supervisors. Okay. Um, all right, and I think those were the only questions. Can I just yeah. say one thing? Uh, page two. Do yep. people get a choice to work on Sundays? Thank you for asking me a question. Um, that's a good question. Um, there are it, the different departments run it a little bit differently. Nobody is allowed to work at time and a half that isn't working directly with the public. Um, nobody is allowed to, or, or like say Dave has a couple of people, it's not there, I'm pointing to him, but uh, he has a couple of maintenance and security people that we need to have that on hand on Sunday. But nobody in technical services, say, would be allowed to work on a Sunday. Nobody can get that time and a half that we don't need here serving the public. Sunday is a very busy day here. So we want to have enough people here. Um, and so some people do choose to work this Sunday. Nobody, I think, I don't know. I don't think anybody's being forced to work a Sunday that doesn't want to work a Sunday, but that time and a half is an incentive to work on the Sunday. Uh -huh. So they are only paid the time and a half for the four hours that were open to the public. Mm -hmm. There are, a, except with the exception of the maintenance people that are here getting the building ready. Okay, thank you. Okay, sure. all right. Let's, I guess, can I just sure. one? Sure. So um, for the Sundays again, if you would it be an additional? So say you're a full time person five days. Yeah. Would you then have to eventually work one Sunday a month? Uh, well, I think two. Uh, uh, you be, it, okay, or would if you, you work, not work on a Monday and then you take that's a right. Sunday? That's right. You, you would get credited with six hours for working on the Sunday, and then you'd have to work an additional hour and a half at some other time. Um, so, and then you'd take a day off during the week to compensate for that. So, like, so you work the Sunday. Six hours. Some people would start working like at noon, and then they would be covered for the whole day or 11:30. And they're, then they work their seven and a half hours. They take Monday off, and they're even. But it's 37 and a half hours a week. However, it's in the week. The week their 70 hours were open. A full-time employee gets 37 and a half hours. Okay, so they still work their hours. Yeah, but they just get paid a little bit more. But their they salary. Get, they get credited credited with six hours of work instead of two, four hours of work. That's ah. the, the time and a half for the four hours that were up to the public. So they get two but less hours they actually have to work. But so they can work get, at 35 yeah. hours, actually. Is that how it works? Uh, yeah, 30, 35 and a half. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it works out that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because you're not open all day Sunday. Pardon me? Is that, is that uh, something that we should be worried about? Is that thing? Is it oh, is that what no, that's, that's coming to the speaker. Oh, okay. Oh, my gosh. I was going to say, I'm going to see a bug zander. The short person will All right. So with the uh, Sunday time and a half, that, you know, if the board decides they don't want to fund that, that is a poor choice. Obviously, it's not going to make those people very happy, but... Um, but that would be your choice, and not every library does that. 
Okay, all right. Uh, unless there has any other questions on Starways, let's move to page three, library materials. So once you, again, I'll go around the room, and uh, just to be different, I'll start with Diane. Diane, do you have any questions about library materials? Do you want to pass, or you want to um, come back to you? Not a, not a, so this moment, no. Okay, all right. Patty? I don't have any that I can see at the moment. Okay. Um, Dennis, library material questions? Um, yeah, I'm, um, I was, I was looking at the online databases, mm -hmm. and it's, it's a, it's a huge, Huge chunk. I mean, the the, the total cost for mm -hmm. library materials is is again seven hundred eighty three thousand um, dollars. And uh, I just you know was trying to better understand. I, I know we have a very high level, but as we look at you know these databases, you know. How, how, what's the breakout to understand, and, and what's the what's the usage on those databases? I would imagine anything online uh, uh, probably allows you to get some understanding of of usage, and uh, you know for that uh, chunk of money, uh, you know uh, it would be helpful to better understand. You know, are, are we using it? You know, if I was a business and I was saying, well. My people use this, or they don't. You know, people are coming in for this or not. Uh, and uh, it, would, it, it would make sense to understand and measure that. Uh, well, we do do that. I mean, we track it. We get statistics uh, every month, and that's uh, done in digital services. And they do uh, get rid of any of the ones that are being underused, or you know, they they are looking at how much cost per use and. There are sometimes things that, you know, the reference librarians feel very much like you're not a real library if you don't have this. And eventually, if people just aren't using it, it does go away. Mm -hmm. That is, you know, we used to buy a lot of reference sets and things like that that would be thousands of dollars a piece. And we don't do that anymore. We don't buy the print reference anymore. It's gone into this online reference. But it is closely monitored. And then the streaming platforms are, the, the use on those are, is increasing quite sharply. They keep adding more things, and uh, people are discovering them and really enjoying, you know, not having necessarily a physical book to check out, but, you know, or a movie or a DVD or music. Um, Hoopla, in particular, has great music. Um, so, yeah, they're getting a lot of use, but that's what they have calculated, and um, and they have their spreadsheet, and I, I looked at it, and it looks good to me. Dennis, would you mind if I interjected a related question mm -hmm. Go ahead. on that online databases? Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at the document we just received tonight, Greg, about uh, projected versus budget, and it shows for online databases, we've now spent 192000 We do expect to pay about 215000 by the end of this fiscal year. But I see we're budgeting only 210000 Not a big difference, but actually a little bit less for next year. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, why do we think it's going to, be, going to go down a little bit next for this coming because fiscal it's, year? It's specific things that she's swapping in and out. The, you know, I don't know if you've ever noticed that the top of our website, it has a search box. And the search box gives you three choices. You can search, you're searching the catalog, you're searching the website itself, or you are searching resources. Resources was a, is a product that we still have, but we're getting rid of, that um, comes from EBSCO, and it searches all of our databases at once. It's a federated search engine, but it's really expensive. And she did a spreadsheet that proved that most people were finding their way to those resources directly. They weren't using that box. So it's going away, and that was $13,000. But there's something else that she is getting that's not a related thing. It's just another thing that she thinks that would be of high value to our patrons. Okay. So All right, uh, Dennis, I'm sorry I interrupted your no, no, go ahead. questions. No, no. Did you have any more questions about library materials? Not at this moment. All right, Carolyn, how about you? Do you have any questions about library materials on page three? Uh, yes. Um, Susan, regarding the reports that are... Um, 
generated or monitored um, for the online usage of these platforms. Could I get a copy of those? I suppose. I, I, I mean, I'm not, the only reason I'm reluctant is that I think that it is something that you have to weigh. You wouldn't know how people use those different things. So you wouldn't know if something was more valuable because it's extremely useful. You would know just from your own point of view, but you wouldn't know what Anil O'Shea would know. And, and so actually, actually, please allow me the opportunity to at least see the documentation and I'll share any questions I have. But I would like to see the progress that we have utilizing all of these different platforms. That's all I'm asking. I, I just think the figures won't give you a picture. You know what, you really can't much. ascertain my knowledge base or my experience. If I didn't think these were valuable, I wouldn't be asking. I don't okay. plan on publicizing it in the paper. I'm just asking because there's a lot of information that's general. I need to be able to make more specific observations before I can make a decision. So. Since it's something that we already have, um, that we, we have in place, I just, I'm just asking for a copy of it. I'll give that to you. I'll give that to all board. Thank you. And then, um, as far as books, um, I noticed that, um, just for example, the first line, you have um, an array of categories of items that will be purchased or may be purchased. Um, just my understanding of preparing for a budget, I believe whoever is responsible for these different types of adult books um, would have projected their purchases or what they plan on buying. Instead of just giving me two sentences, could I just see what they actually submitted and planned to purchase in the upcoming year for 2018-19? It's based on the previous year. So you know that James Patterson is going to come out with a book every five minutes and that people are going to go crazy for it and you're going to need it in all the different formats. And how and is this presented to you? For a well, I, I follow this very, I sign every PO, I know exactly what they're ordering. I know so, and so I know, uh, and then I know how they allocate the money. Mm -hmm. I know this very thoroughly. And uh, they, so they don't say I'm going to buy 20 James Patterson books, though. They just say, I know that in the past year we ordered this many things. It's all based on past experience and then keeping track of, you know, the costs of things. Mm -hmm. So we came up with 181000 for adult books. I'm just asking for a listing of who plans on buying what to well, come up with that. We can't possibly know what titles they're going to buy in the upcoming year. We can't possibly spend $181,000 on a win. We, we, we're probably going to be buying, buying books that haven't even been written yet during the time of fiscal Or years. not published yet. Or not published well, yet. Well, I'm either. sure for $181,000 you can give the taxpayers a little more than just Korean books, Spanish, or I don't books, think you can. Yeah, yeah, so I'm, I'm interested in understanding what adult Maybe books will be purchased for a hundred and eighty-one thousand? Well, we can decide that as a board. Okay, we'll put that on the list of your requests. And actually, I would like to have a listing of these costs: eighty thousand for juvenile. We have no idea what we're going to buy. Do oh, you, you, some kind of money. Money. Yeah, you have catalogs, book lists, school library journal. Mm -hmm. But it's a continuous library. process. Our school librarian <laughs> never got a budget without being able to justify what she was buying. So we're trying I to figure never, out how I never do that. I never do. I'm a school librarian. No, I would I get my budget if I every year to do and these they things. increase it by and you just buy whatever you want whenever you want. Yes. Yeah. But you based that on your experience and your yes. knowledge yes. of what, what's going to be needed and used. They don't ask you for a list of books that you're going to buy Absolutely too. Absolutely not. This is what and actually my lines are actually we have my lines are gray and I can actually use some book money and I can get audiobooks or I can get supplies or I can get ebooks. All my lines are gray. So then what I'm trying to say is for the 2018-19 budget, we have a total of seven hundred and eighty-three thousand dollars worth of purchases, and you can't give me any details. For each of these line items. Actually, this is pretty detailed because it says yeah. this is actually print that I'm, I'm assuming this is print. 
yes. adult fiction, nonfiction, which is including any memoirs. Okay, I'm you asking for any type specific costs. How much are we going to spend in the first quarter? Some of these books are forty, fifty dollars. I have no idea. But I don't I, understand I do. why. I do. Excuse me, can I finish it? It's my turn. I don't understand why somebody would come up to you and say, "I want one hundred and eighty-one thousand dollars to buy books," and you don't expect them. To provide any information at all. I mean, this is or almost a million dollars on whatever right. I feel like buying. But but I don't think you're really misconstruing the process of what happens. Do you have any specific questions mm -hmm. about the I'm asking on for three? specific details that right. will justify these new dollar amounts all right. for 2018 well, 19. At the end of the meeting, we'll address your list of requests and the board will decide what to direct. You know, before we wait that long, can I just make one more statement? You uh, know? No, actually, I think we need to keep moving along and we'll address requests at the end of the meeting for further information. Uh, but right now what we're doing is going around and asking the staff questions about the dollar amounts that we have here. So, um, Linda, do you have any questions about materials? Page three. I don't have any questions. Okay. Um, if I can just make one statement, yes. though, what you instead of seeing what we're going to project it to buy, you can look at what we bought in the past and see what the last actuals were, and then you would have your answer to your question. Thank you. Okay. All right, Tim. Um. Well, I have a, uh, an observation. Um, I'm looking at the projected actuals, and um, I'm hoping. That you're not going to like books about in the next three months, spend forty thousand dollars just to get to the one seventy eight. And I'm hoping you're gonna books youth their services spending another twenty six thousand dollars just to get the eighty. It's it's odd that your projected amount is exactly the budget amount. Well, I mean, their goal is to spend it because it is a percentage of the total budget. We're supposed to be spending 12% of our operating budget on those materials. And I understand. It just, it seems like it's not, it hasn't been spread out. Well, the, the, you remember, we had the migration project, so we actually couldn't do anything for the maternity leave. And the maternity leave. And now almost three full time people. Well, you know, a few people weren't so fertile. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so, let me ask you this question. Then. So, Tim, if I may, if, okay. you, um, if you look back to the March 31st uh, financial statements, right. uh, the total library materials uh, was uh, um, overspent according to the budget by uh, under a thousand dollars over eight months, before, over nine months. So, in other words, we took we took the budget from last year and we divided it by twelve. And we're right where we should be. Okay, so I, I, don't, I don't have the, the document in front of me. So if, it, if it's $40,000 the last three months of the year, it's because that's what the rateable expenditure for that line item is. Okay. Yeah, just, just, just no, no, I see what you're saying. You're saying don't burn through things right. unnecessarily just to. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. periodicals, you spent 15 yeah. for nine months. And now we're projecting spending 32 for 12 but months. I, yeah. It seems like. I think that. Uh, but periodicals maybe you buy once a yearly subscription. Right, that's exactly right. Yeah, and that I think it's not that. That's what I was All right, other than that, I don't have any questions on the actual. Okay. So, I uh, actually have one, one last question. On uh, page three? E, uh, yes. Okay. So, it, just to better understand, uh, Susan said that to spend 12% of the budget should be on the materials. Okay. So does does that coincide with what we have set up here? So is this 783 12% of our budget? Is, is that what you mean seven, by what seven, you were saying? Seven, 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 yeah. Yeah, 783 actually equals to 12.1%. Yeah, and that's, I, 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 the, I, yeah, I'm not budget, worried about plus but or plus. the 772 uh, computes to 11.9. Yeah, yeah, I'm not worried about the. I, I just wanted to make, you know, I want to piece things together to understand that, oh, we're spending this chunk of money, and it, there's some mandate that says that we should spend 12%. The state librarian. State. 
the state library? It's a, set, a standard for the libraries. Okay. You know, and, and it's to protect the patrons. It's so that yeah, we no, don't I, spend stuff on. No, and, and, and I mean, look, if somebody say yes to me, I can, I can better understand and say, okay, the reason why we we're spending this money is because of this. And, no, thanks. Uh, could, could you tell us a little bit more of those state, state standards? Or, uh, yeah, the, well, you know, your green book that's got yeah. the standards for our libraries, that's that's what, one of the places that that's found, yeah. Okay. All right, so uh, the only question I had was already answered. So we can move to page four now. Page four is library operating expenditures. And let's get to go around. And uh, Dan, I'll start with you again. Dan, do you have any questions about the amounts that are listed on page four? Well, can you give us a minute? To sure. Do you, you want me to start? Uh, I'll start with Tim. How's that? Is that okay? I'll go the other way? Okay. Tim, do you have anything uh, about uh, questions regarding page four? Uh, I do not. Other than uh, when we do get to our Printing and when you talk about our, um, our newsletters, you know, just because we budget something, you know, just this for everything, just because we budget something doesn't mean that's what we're going to spend. So when we start to discuss changes in our um, expenditures in the coming year, then those particular um, topics will be decided on uh, at, a, uh, at a board level. I'd like to echo that some too. Right. So, we actually make decisions on particular expenditures. And oh, well, oftentimes we'll turn to you and ask right. you, well, is it that in our budget or not? In right. which case right. you could say yes or no. But the actual particular expenditures or larger expenditures. You get anything over five thousand yes. dollars comes to board. Right. Comes to board. So, okay. so Tim, you're basically saying it's placeholder. Yes. Yes, and our and when we do understand that the per capita grant expenditure, obviously, is money we're getting from the state, so it's it's a wash. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a budget wash that you know it's not actually money that's coming from the right. Let's start yeah. the letter. That, so. yeah, we have to spend that seventy-one thousand six hundred five dollars, or we won't get it next year. Pretty hard to spend the <laughs> Yeah, right, I, have, I, have, I have gotten it back from the state library since because I have forgotten the sense. <laughs> so, unfortunately, oh, yeah. let me amend it. All right, okay. that's it for you? No, that's it. All right, Linda, page four. Do you have any questions about no. operating expenditures? Mm -hmm. All right, Carolyn, page four. Do you have some questions? Um, yes. Um, just for print, just to make sure I'm clear on printing, um, we have a budget of fifty to nine. Um, you're mentioning the largest here is the newsletter. Um, so I, I don't understand, but are, are we saying we may change the newsletter and by raising this to fifty to nine, that allows us to increase the cost of the newsletter? But we haven't even determined if. That's something we want to do. So my concern is once the numbers in this budget, I hear repeatedly, you approve the budget, we can spend the money. And I, I have an issue with that. Mm -hmm. Because again, generalities, I don't have a clue what you plan on doing here. And I'm not sure that the ideas of how you want to go about either contacting the residents or sending out the newsletter is probably you know the best is, is, is a, the most cost conscious way of doing it. And I'm not even allowed to discuss that or ask for the details, but yet it's 50 to 9. Well, I think what we've said here is that there's a possibility we may want to send the newsletter out more often, but that's something we will discuss in the future. But in order to ensure that we have enough money to do that if we want to do that or if that's built into the budget, I think we want to have the dollars available to us in the budget. Although whether we actually do spend the money for that purpose is something that we will address at later meetings. So then, I, can I at least feel assured that because there's a budget line item with a hundred thousand, ninety thousand dollars, does not mean the library can just spend that money? I mean, are we at least on that page? Uh, where are you looking? I'm just saying, looking at a budget line item, you know, we have generalities about what we're going to do with it, 
What, what's bothering me is we, we don't know specifically what the costs are for any of these, you know, varied listings, but we have a dollar amount. And if I knew just because it says 90000 or 79000 just because the number is there doesn't mean we have to spend it, or they're, they're, they should be able to spend it because we approved it. Mm -hmm. well, well, what are we approving? We don't even know what we're doing, but yet the library seems to think because it's in here, they can spend it. I have a problem with that. Well, there's no requirement that the money be spent, uh, and if we are making large expenditures, as Susan said, it's over $5,000, then we need to approve it. And, and the, and the um, yeah, sorry to interrupt, but the newsletter is over $5,000. So before we made a change in, in that, and I also know that that's a, a topic of concern to some of you. And so that is one thing I definitely would bring to the board and say, you know, bring what we think, what, what, what our recommendation is, and that would be a board decision. Not every expenditure, though, I think it's, I think Carolyn is making a fair point. We certainly do not bring every decision to the board because that is what you hired me for. And I think it's fair for you to have a, an idea of what things would be spent on. But CCS, there's, I, you know, the cost of CCS, for example, the $90,000 item, I, it costs what it costs. I, I can't change that. So, you know, there, there are some things here that are a whole lot of different things jumbled together. The library supplies are, you know, it costs, those are for spine labels and tape and things like that. They're very specific. You wouldn't want to get into that. And you know, I have a question about that. So I know it's $40,400. How do you determine, or, or based on what do you determine that's how much you'll need for items on the shelf? What's because, the, because we put items on the shelf all this year and all last year, and so we know how much it costs. And so they keep track of that, and they know that, you know, I think one of the things I mentioned in the memo is that they had to finally start replacing the security tags this past year, because we originally had three years' worth when we first got the security, but now they have to buy them again. We haven't had to do that before. So she has kept track of everything. Each supervisor has parts of the budget that they are responsible for tracking, and then when they put in their budget request, they're basing their budget request on what they has know that they used in the past year. So for example, if we have a materials budget of X number of dollars, that means that for the books that are being purchased, they're all going to need a Mylar jacket. Every Mylar jacket costs 69 cents. It protects the material. Uh, and so we're going to pay that. So it, so See, that's what it's based on. But okay, that's, that's way too point. detailed for you. No, guys. no, and that's a good point because you mentioned if they're going to buy X number of books, they're going to need some Mylar tag or this or that. Right. But we already determined we're going to buy $181,000 worth of adult books, but we have no clue how many, what they cost. So I'm trying to figure out how do you go from $181,000 worth of books and now I need 40000 of supplies for the shelves. I mean, there's no correlation. So where does so, that number come from? It, but we are doing it this year. That's what we're doing this year. We, we, we are basing it. I mean, it's not going to be a radical change from year to year. No. So it's just based on past experience, which is, I think, any kind of spending is going to be And then based just, on and now that we're on books, so last year adults bought $178,000 worth of books. So this year, we don't need $10,000 worth of books. We need another $181,000. What, what part are you talking about? I, I'm saying we're talking like, well, because of the books, she needs to buy um, supplies to ready the materials for the shelves. So, and I'm trying to say, you're going to buy $181,000 worth of books. You have no idea how many books or, or whatever. You just know you're going to spend that much money. And now that I look at it, we spent $178,000 last year in adult books. How do you justify needing another $181,000 this year? Well, we because books every year. We, a, a million checkouts. People come in and check those things out, and they don't want the books that are 20 years old. They oh, want no, that I'm book sure that they came don't. out last week. But let me, and that's another very good point, because I've been getting, since I'm stuck home, I'm getting calls constantly, and one of the, a consistent complaint I'm getting about this library is that we have the worst collection of books, any of the current books that they want, these ladies are on book clubs and all this, they can't get them here. So I'm trying to figure out what are we doing? Well, that's a good question. So to buy more books. And so then there's more no states that the, according to the other libraries. So he wants to increase this budget count? Excuse me. According to other libraries, we have the smallest quantity of books. 
So I'm trying to figure out what so books is it that we're buying? Should buy more. I don't know. No, yeah. I'm trying to say what are we buying? See again, you there's know, no tracking. More but let me just uh, no. complaints to bring to us uh, so if there's there's some complaints there. Certainly, I belong to a book club, and I've never had a problem getting a book here. I always get it, and I always get it on time. Just get one today. So I don't I don't, I don't know what your friend's problems are. Well, again, anyway, like I said, we're going to buy we're going to buy books, and we don't know second, what we're buying. I think we have a, an answer. Or so question. I went to Carolyn. Carolyn, I think we have an answer to what you were just saying, right? So let me uh, add some facts. Um, our holdings are roughly uh, three hundred thousand uh, items. Uh, when uh, when the year is all done, we put we actually acquire somewhere between twenty two and twenty five thousand items. So the 181,000 in books is not by any stretch of the imagination replacing every single book that we bought or equal to the overall collection. The book value, um, the book cost on the collection as of the end of last year was 3,255,000. This is from the uh, audit report that uh, McClure and Sarah. Uh, on the collection, meaning what collection? Like all of the books? All that stuff. Okay. Okay. So it's uh, roughly $3.3 million. So if you look at the databases as, um, as something separate, you have $773,000. You take two, roughly $200,000 off. You get about $500,000 that's replacing the stuff that's on the shelves, as well as um, the uh, digital um, uh, things. Like you, you use uh, uh, your Kindle a lot or, or whatever device you're reading off of. So, it includes not only the uh, uh, the paper books, but it includes the books that uh, that aren't paper, that are virtual. Uh, it includes the books that are um, on, uh, on disc, you know, the audio books, and uh, uh, either virtually or, or on a on a disc, in, in every other format that we have. So, uh, uh, so that's kind of the rhythm of the of the purchasing. What you do get on a monthly basis is you get the statistic sheets, which has a lot of this information in it. If you looked at, for example, the uh, the top part of the statistic sheet, it'll tell you, you know, how many uh, adult items are being uh, are being taken out. It'll tell you how many teen items are being taken out, how many kids items are take, being taken out, and you know, and so on and so forth. There's a lot of good information. And tell you if we're up or if we're down. Yeah, we're doing that a month, uh, year to date, um, and it'll. Uh, I think it'll answer a lot of your questions. And and those are you know those are the numbers that uh, the professionals in this building use to judge what they you know what they need in order to keep a relevant collection that uh, that the public will enjoy in spite of the comments that you're getting from whoever happens to be calling you. And uh, uh, keeping us a vibrant place where they can get the latest materials. Okay, and I think the complaint is not necessarily like books on tape or whatever, but it's paperback or paper books, you know, that they can't get. So what, what we try to do is uh, we try to order an appropriate amount of books. Okay, if, if for example, when um, Fire and Fury came out, or mm -hmm. when uh, James Comey's book uh, came out. Um, we could have easily have ordered a hundred of each and have them all go out immediately. Okay, and everybody would be satisfied. But after a relatively short period of time, we'd have 75 or 80 of them lying around the library. Uh, and the shame of you know the shame of this business is is, is when you have to order enough to satisfy demand reasonably. Because at some point in the future you're going to retire those books, okay? So, you know, so there's this ebb and flow where you know you you know you, you look at the holds that are being placed and you order appropriately, and and then once those holds are all satisfied, then you take these books and you retire them, okay? It's not, you know, it's not a year's process, you know, it's probably within a year. You know, for a lot of things, um, and some things you know transcend time. I mean, you know, the, you know, you get copies of uh, the classics or something like that. You're not going to retire because you probably only have a couple of them to begin with, and you're going to keep them on the shelf for a longer period of time. But you know, that's a slower, 
you know, that's a slower checkout. No, that's true. Okay. And then just All one right. question about the 300,000 holdings. Mm -hmm. So 300,000 holdings aren't necessarily 300,000 Niles Library residents. Or Niles Main Library. This could be anybody from anywhere a holding, looking for a book. A holding a book. is a book, a magazine, an electronic mm -hmm. book. So that's that's the stuff that people take out. So it's from the residents here, or it could be any no, the the residents. It's library. what we have in the library. So, so, so it's out of the right now. So if you say, I, I, excuse me, if you say I want a copy of Fire and Fury, mm -hmm. we'll say, okay, we got twelve. We have close to twelve holdings. Okay. Okay. One out. That's a checkout. So, so then we have twelve. We still have twelve. One's on the street. Eleven are on the shelf. Okay. So it's the number of items that you have. I thought it was right. three hundred thousand people requesting mm -hmm. all this stuff. But I'm saying, oh, oh you're you're thinking whole whole list. List. Yeah. yeah, I get it. Yeah, I get it. All right. I can't understand. I got it. Right. Thanks for that. I'm just saying that a very popular book might have three hundred holes. That's possible. Okay. All right, let, let's, let's give you other people a chance to ask some questions about page four. Dennis, do you have any questions about library operating expenditures? Yeah, uh, so I'm sure somebody at some point has talked about what CCS is. Could, uh, I know it's, it says here, cost of libraries, integrated library system. So what is that in the very briefest description? I don't need a detail, but... It's our back home business system. Okay. It's a, it's a consortium of 24 libraries sharing the databases of the patrons and all of the materials, and it's how we keep track of basically everything. Okay. So, like, when I go on the library page and I'm looking for a book, and it says, do you want to switch to Niles Library, or it clicks on, I click on it, and I can see all these other libraries. Those are the other libraries. Correct. And this database is shared with all it's those other libraries. libraries. And so when you're pushing putting holds on, yeah. I can put holds on Algonquin, for instance. Right. I think they're usually yeah. the first name on the list. Yeah, so we're able to share our materials. It's a better right. use of, of okay. money. And it, since it is a consortium, it's all just all allocated a cost per library, and that's what we have to pay. And so, wow, what, what a good deal. 90,000 times 24 is... Well, not, not, not every library is the same size. Oh, so, yeah. oh so, so, so there's 24 libraries, but they can be different sizes. Absolutely. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. got right. it. So that cuts down on the number of books that we have to buy, though. And it cuts right? down yeah, on yeah, the no, I get it. I, I, you know, yeah. it makes sense to do that sharing. I was just like looking at the cost, trying to justify it. And sure. It's like, well, yeah, we have to belong to that. And because of the size, uh, I'm assuming because of the size of our library, it's it's we're going to be ninety thousand, and if it was a smaller library, it might be forty thousand. Correct. Right. Okay. Um, just to give you some background, uh, ninety thousand is about what the licensing would cost if we were on a standalone basis. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you have to consider the amount of right. uh, you know the amount of uh, uh, your disk array that you have to support right. your uh, database. You would we would actually have to have the DBA on staff. You know what yeah, those guys yeah, cost, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, so it's easy, you know, it's easy to estimate that on a standalone basis it would be at least twice that much. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then on the library supplies, you kind of helped me a better understand. I, you know, I'm looking at library supplies and I see the dollar value. I'm, I'm a cheap guy. And when I see $35,000 for supplies and you're just going to put stuff back on the shelf, I'm going, what the hell? So uh, the fact that they need security tags, mm -hmm. mylar jackets, then, yeah, but by, by under yeah, so by seeing that stuff, it helps me better feel better uh, about it in expenditure. So I appreciate that. Uh, internet charges, it is what it is. Uh, <coughs> So we kind of, uh, was this printing for the, uh, oh, so this is the printing, the 52 is for the printing for the uh, uh, potential brochure, uh, but that doesn't, that doesn't include the mailing cost, so that's just the, it's just the cost. I'm sorry, you said it was for what brochure? Uh, I, I was, I chapter was, chapter one for mailing. Yeah, for no, chapter, no, one. chapter one. He's saying for yeah, chapter one currently in its current configuration is just short of $6,000 per quarter. Yeah. Which yeah. is about you know twenty four thousand uh, dollars a year, uh, and then we uh, also go outside to print collateral materials for uh, you know summer reading, uh, winter reading, 
and you know other uh, major programs. Sometimes, if you remember, we we had a, a banner stretched across the front door with our yep. new name on it until the new yep. signs came. <laughs> so uh, we had to have you know we had to pay to have that printed. Um, and uh, uh, the reason that it's uh, up is because one of the things that we're considering, if you remember my presentation. On the strategic slide, we're considering the reconfiguration or the reconstitution of uh, Chapter <coughs> One. So, you know, uh, what information we have currently is leading us to believe that we need to print it more often, which would lead to higher printing costs. Um, in general, the budget is is constructed in a way that supposes that our um, that our operating footprint will will persist into the future. Mm -hmm. And there, and then where we have changes in that footprint, uh, such as what we're suggesting possibly with Chapter One, we'll definitely have to come to the board to say we're changing our operating footprint because so, uh, it would be a terrible thing if uh, suddenly um, patrons and residents started receiving uh, this uh, uh, this item every other month when you know we didn't have any buy-in, we didn't have any. Mm -hmm. Uh, we didn't have any uh, uh, advertising around it to tell people what to look for and what to expect and so forth. So it's you know it's a coordinated effort, including what the board has to say up or down um, on, a, on a vote to mm -hmm. uh, to change that footing. So I've uh, received a request for a break, and I want to know when's a good time to do that. So Dennis, do yeah, you, you have more questions? I have more questions, but you can break in the middle of my well, questions. Well, if, if we're almost done with page four, I'd like to get through page four if okay. I can, okay. just to uh, make it a you know clear break. I don't know about you, Patty and Diane. Do you have questions on page four? Are you done? Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not done yet, but okay. go ahead, they can go ahead. Go you, ahead. I just have a quick question on the off-site storage of paper files mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. make obligations. Mm -hmm. what? Oh, go ahead. Yeah. So, um, we're required by law to uh, maintain books and records in accordance with uh, uh, the state uh, guidelines. Records of what? Uh, business records. So, personnel records, for example. Uh, personal records um, are an item that we have to keep in perpetuity. It's a big thing. Um, uh, financial records uh, we have to keep uh, for a prescribed amount of time. I, I can't remember what it is exactly. Uh, so uh, we were drowning in paper, and uh, what we decided to do is to send a significant amount of those uh, past records to a place called Iron Mountain. Uh, which is an off-site storage facility. It costs about twenty-five hundred dollars a year. And we can't do it digitally. No, we got to keep that well, it, 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 you can do anything digitally. Uh, there's uh, there's two challenges with that. One is paying people to digitally record everything, and uh, and the other is having the electronic storage uh, or managing the offline electronic storage of those. All right. So, uh, Dennis, did you have uh, another you know, quick question on page four? Oh, that's great. I, I think I'm about ready to break myself. So. Okay. All right. We will take a five-minute break now and resume uh, where we left off. Go to Mark Steve. So, if you have any questions, that's what you're asking. Any questions on the next three pages? I, I thought we were going to finish on now. You have another question on four? Yeah. So, uh, okay, we, well, we can be yeah, yet. Sorry. Okay. All right. Where are we convening now? Uh, you have one more question on page four? Uh, actually, one or two. So, the, the programming piece here for mm -hmm. uh, you know, operating expenditures. So, so that's that roughly 80000 80, or so. Uh, that's, that's money that's being spent across all of the, the different programs that go on throughout the year. Is there another question? Oh yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, again, I, I, I always have questions when it comes down to, oh no, that's for the Iron Mountain, so that was already explained. Uh, the per capita expenditures, so the money from the per capita grant expenditures, is, is there a, uh, 
is there something that is being targeted, you know, you're targeting that money for? Or? Yeah, that's what I talked about earlier, that it's uh, what I wrote the grant for is technology, supplies, technology equipment, materials, if there's a particular area of the collection that needed to be particularly built up. I think last year we did travel books uh -huh. because those go out of date so quickly. Um, and to hire temporary staff to do projects rather than hiring more staff. Um, or to hire interns and I think there was one more thing, which I lost now. But anyway, the, the, it's broad categories of things and programs this year. Okay. Is that it? Uh, no, so, so the, uh, the volunteers, uh, I'm trying to understand, uh, so there's, there's a budget for $2,800 for volunteers. Uh, and it sounds, what it sounds like to me, as I was reading, it sounds like that it's, it's to pay for somebody to manage the volunteers. No, no, Cindy manages the volunteers, and she's a member of the staff. It is um, software, about $1,500 for a software. And is that also the party, the luncheon that we give them every year? Is yeah, they're too. Yeah, we give them a luncheon every year. Very low scale, but they are very grateful, and they do a huge amount of work for us. Tremendous amount of work. Which we are invited to. So, 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 so this is actually software? Part of it is. Okay. Right, Craig, it's still in there? Uh, yes, about $1,500 yeah. is uh, a software product called Logistics, and uh, that's used to track and uh, manage uh, ah. uh, the volunteers and their schedules and, and any reporting that goes along with it. It's like a time clock they can punch in on. That, that line more than pays for itself many times over. That, that, uh, that's good for me. I had a, another question if I can go, or where are we in the line of things? Uh, well, we're, I thought we were done with four. No, yeah. actually, um, I didn't get to finish. So, is what, what, is what is your question? What is your question? I'm looking at the class here. It's 10 o'clock. I know. I'm so I'd like think you to it's just late. make your question pretty quick. Okay. I'm going to have to take whatever time I need. Okay, it is my question is about programming. And Susan, you mentioned that the um, budget amount for 2018-19 is lower because you plan on using per capita funds. Yes. So what will this line item be for 2018-19? It will be what it is. It's the 80000 instead of this year's ninety six. All right, it's 79000 You said it was decreased. I decreased it from... The, uh, the amount that they had requested for each department, I took $5,000 out of juvenile, 5000 out of adult, 2000 out of teen, and I think I took some amount out of the events as well, and I plan on paying for some of those through per capita rather than having it as part of this budget. So then our programming cost will be 96840 It's just not all coming out correct. of the budget? That is okay. correct. Okay, then I was... Reading a document we received from you about the program budget, and you mentioned here that there's a lot of hard data to make these decisions. Um, you um, are also able to, it says, you know what the attendance is, and um, you have a program planner who weighs the relative success of these programs. Correct. So that was the information that I had asked for um, this year. And I happened to find this from last year's budget, which we already have this. So what I wanted to ask is, could I get this information for the programs that we did have last year? It is not in writing. So... I mean, you have the attendance. You get the attendance every month. But then the program coordinator in each department looks at a program and they're weighing how much staff time did this take, how many people attended it, what is the relative worth of this program, is this just a fun program or is this something that is potentially life changing for someone. And that is not all things that go on paper. So, so there are no reports. There are no written reports. So but they just it verbal or in your mind? Well, and for example, in Ariane's department, she is the supervisor, she has a program coordinator, she has a program right. planning team. They sit around a table and they look at this data and they analyze it. I also have a program management team that looks at things library-wide, although we've been kind of on a hiatus lately because of the migration, but 
we, there are many eyes on this to judge, and, and nobody wants to waste their time and nobody wants to waste money. So uh, we try to spend the money as best we can. And uh, So then, if I'm understanding correctly, so we have a budget of about $90,000 on programs. But we do not record anything that happens with these programs so we can go from one year to the next. We just, we do everything verbally on a web. No, I don't think that's really a question. We've been over this again and again and again. It's not that on a web. Well, it, it's just, she just stated right. here that there's a lot of hard data, so I'm just asking for it now. I well, the data that we get, we get every month we get attendance data, so. That's not right. what I'm talking about. So right, fine. We are going to have to move on. It's after 10 o'clock. Well, I, I don't and, see well, how we're going to point out that uh, anyone on the board is welcome to call up Susan or Greg uh, between now and the next meeting if you have any questions. But I want to give everyone an opportunity to ask any questions they have on any page of this document uh, tonight. So we can't get bogged down on one line on one page. So we have to keep moving. But you well, can, of course... Respect. President Diamond, you we have a 10-page budget, and you want to cram it in in a few hours. Uh, yes. It's in a word, disgrace. There yes, is no other governmental body in this you district that does that. You can ask the questions you have during that period of time, and you can call the No, staff this is a board the, meeting, right, and it we're should moving be done here. All right, I'm going to be going around and asking board members if they have any questions on pages 5, Six or seven. So this round, we're going to look at pages five, six, or seven. So Tim, I'm going to ask you: Do you have any questions relating to the proposed budgets listed on page five, six, or seven? I do not. All right. I will move on to Linda. Do you have some questions based on page five, six, or seven? Excuse me. I, I'm sorry, but. Uh, I, I am not going to be able to ask all of my questions. All, all right, fine. Thank you. You can call staff later on if you wish. No, I, I, I'm not going to call staff. I think the board has to be exposed to all of the questions. Mm -hmm. They need to see all well, of the responses. All right. um, and, and if we have to break it into two sessions, mm -hmm. as, as Maine Township does, as the mm -hmm. Niles Village. Uh, Village does, mm -hmm. and the Park District, then, then we have to do it. Well, I, I, I appreciate everybody's time, and I would like to get it done in one session, but it's 5 after 10. Okay, what we will do is when we get done uh, going through this, uh, we'll ask if other people want to be exposed to the answers to your questions. Wow. Um, if other people oh don't gosh. want to be exposed to they the should, answers Then they should resign question. from the board. Oh, no, they should have to sit yes. and listen to everything you have to say. Absolutely, we should all be concerned board, about this sorry. budget. All right, let's go through this. Five, six, and seven. Carolyn, did you have any questions on five, six, and seven? Oh, I'm sure I do. Okay. How about if everyone else asks their questions so I don't monopolize their time? All right, fine, I'll move on. Uh, Dennis, did you have any questions on five, six, or seven? Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, on, on five, starting at the top, so uh, uh, copiers, I, mm -hmm. I see that we're at 10,000. And I just, I just wondered, you know, Again, just trying to understand, uh, you know, the, the, the cost aspect, you know. Are, are, there, are these for the patrons? Are these for the employees? Uh, As it says, it's for staff and patron use. Yeah, right sure. next to here it says both. Okay. And, and, and is there a way to understand the usage? Because we're, you know, uh, in, in many places where I was at, uh, in my lifetime, there was always a, you know, this go to green plan, trying to move forward and, and cut back. And I, I'm just wondering, is, 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 are we at a point where, you know, we can cut back on the number of copiers that are, are currently in use? I don't know how many there are, and I don't know if it makes sense. So I'm just, that's why I'm just asking the question. I'm not sure exactly what the question is. So, oh, so no, I, let me, let me I, rephrase it. So, so how many copiers does the library have? I'm just uh, thinking. Uh, uh, and roughly, and if you're if you're off by one and you miss one, don't worry about it. Five. Yeah, well, I, I was going to say I believe we have seven. Um, yeah, so seven. We, we'll, we'll go with seven. And do you guys? I have one. Second. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Do you want to know what I know, or just what you know? So, wow. I know, wow. I had, 
Uh, this is interesting. It, it went from good to bad. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. I, I apologize. I was just trying to have a conversation and, and make a quick answer. I'm sorry. I'll shut up now. Uh, there, uh, there are seven, uh, and, and we get charged uh, quick rates uh, for uh, uh, basically for toner and maintenance. Uh, and uh, those seven are patron facing, and we collect money uh, for it. If you look at uh, if you look at the top part of the uh, of the of the budget, where we have uh, pay for print twenty thousand five hundred, that is directly related to the uh, copiers on page five. Uh, we also have a couple of copiers for uh, that are staff facing, and uh, those are used uh, to produce materials. Like tonight, and those are also uh, charged at a click rate uh, for uh, toner and maintenance. And what, what's that, what do you mean by what, what's a click rate? So it's just by per print or something like that. Uh, an image is a click, okay. and uh, if it's color, black and white, uh, or grayscale, or whatever, we're charged uh, a negotiated rate on that. Okay. So, and so again, the, the question really helps me understand cost, trying to explain to others. So the fact that there's seven uh, patron-facing copiers is a great thing. You're getting money back in off of that. That's revenue coming in. That kind of helps me better understand, oh, well, makes sense. Let's have these copiers. And it's not something that I know. I, 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 I'm i coming across in some cases as... as Somebody that's trying to be argumentative, and, I, and I'm, I'm not. I, I'm just trying to better understand. And, and, and for a lot of you, you've been here a long time. Okay, that's fine. Just next question. Okay, so professional development. Uh, you know, uh, seminars uh, attended by library staff throughout the year. So it's all all uh, library staff here for uh, their allotted X amount. Uh, Per year. Well, so, yeah, yeah, it's you decide who goes to go. I do. Yes, I do. And I see it's, it's greatly reduced this year, and that's because you're not going to one of the conventions. This year. Is that right? That is correct. Okay. And which one is that? Is that the PLA, the PLA is which is biannual? Mm -hmm. So we see a big reduction this year, although it may, I imagine, go up again next year. Probably will. Other questions, Dennis? Yep. So I I, uh, I see here about consultants and uh, you know we're we're going from thirty thousand to forty one thousand. Uh, it uh, I, I I think I remember this was you know was part of it was for the uh, uh, the web update. So is there is there planned usage for the other piece of you know what's left? I mean did we not budget for this? This website update is part of last year as well, or no? no. So it's, it's it's strictly from this year. So it's in in the first part of 2018, 2019. We're using 26,000 for for the consultants. Is is there? Well, we you know for example, our website is on Drupal. What Sasha? Seven and it has to be upgraded to Drupal eight, so that's a piece of it. And then, then you have to fix all the things that get broken when you right. had to upgrade it, um, because all the pieces of software have to yeah. fit together. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's a piece of it. There are a number of things that we want to do with that. So, that that's I I, I fully understand that the pro promotional expenses. I, you know, I, again, being a cheap guy, I'm you know, and and I realize at some point in my lifetime, I three kids came through here quite often, and they may have received some of these promotional expenses. However, over time, I've, I've, I've uh, learned what, what the costs were for many things within the village. And, and so I, my, my thought is, is that we, we cut back on promotional items. Again, I, I've we, always been a firm believer. We, of, we are cutting back, aren't we? Mm -hmm. We're cutting back. You're cutting back a whole four thousand dollars. Well, you know, I, I appreciate the fact that they're for. So they're the next time somebody back. has twenty-six thousand dollars and doesn't know what to do with it, please give it to me. 
I, I is think, there a question? I think we, yeah. yeah, so my question is, can we cut this to zero? That's my okay. question. Does the board want to entertain that? If we're not voting for it. Oh, that's true. Just, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, in my opinion, I, I know everybody's on a race to get out of here, and so everybody's upset now. We were going along fine. Please. Please. Cutting it to zero seems like a, an absurd okay. thing to want just to do. But I asked your question. So, okay. can we get can we get rid of T-shirts? Can we get rid of you know Christmas tree lighting? Uh, you know, there's things that you know when you don't not paying with taxpayers' dollars, you just don't do. I, I don't do certain things at my house because I can't afford it. And I don't think that we should be using taxpayer dollars to, to buy t-shirts to light trees during Christmas time and to do other things. They're nice to have. So that's that's my my question and I was just you know, that's my opinion and I'm sorry. Um, do you have other questions about five, six, or seven? Yes. Um, so you know the the, the, the postage and freight. So is, is is this postage and freight for mailing out those brochures? Yes, in part. In part. That's not all of the postage. We mail all kinds of things from the library. Lots of I don't know. And all kinds of envelopes that end up getting mailed, and then uh, part of the cost of doing interlibrary loan, where we get materials from another library that's not part of the consortium, uh, that's actually mailed. Okay. Um, if you want to take a minute to collect your thoughts, I'm going to ask Patty, do you have any questions about 5, no. 6, or 7? Diane, do you have any questions about no, 5, no, 6, no. Page, no. or 7? No. 6 Three. or 7, Diane. Um, okay. Yes, anything further? I'm yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm still on page 5, and I have questions about, you know, the, the, the trustee expenses. And, and, you know, why we need to continue to have that as high as it is. And, uh, you know, the delivery charge, it's mentioned the delivery charge of, you know, packets out to everybody. Mm -hmm. So that's paid in under mileage, you know, under the gas. Uh, printing them too. You know, so, uh, so um, you know, I, I, I just... It, it seems awful high for again. You know, Dennis, we, we only spent thirteen hundred. We're projecting to spend thirteen hundred. So again, this is a budgetary place. Yeah, and I, I know, but but you know, we're we're over budgeting for things. We're overstating. Well, you know, it may be that spending. we want to attend some seminars this coming year, and um, you know, we've done that in the past. So I think we want to make sure the money is there if we choose to spend it in that fashion. I mean, I. I Served on other boards, and this is really a very small expense, a very small percentage of the overall budget for trustee expenses. And then, as far as parking goes, uh, trying to better understand why we have a lease to have parking with culverts. To at. keep the cars, uh, the staff cars, out of the patron parking lot. Because what, when we park it just on the street, people complain about that too. The neighbors do not like the staff cars being parked on the street. So that seemed like a good solution to the board who approved that lease at the time. Again, again in my case, you know, I, I see it goes out kind of far, but I would have, uh, I would have expected that we should uh, try and reduce that cost as well. It's an intergovernmental agreement. Yeah. You know, we could go back and try, but I don't, you know, I don't know what went into the original negotiations on that. And then I'm just, uh, you know, as far as um, the uh, supplies, you know, we have sixty-eight thousand dollars for supplies janitorial supplies and kitchen supplies, yet I thought we had on another page somebody comes in and does does cleaning. So I, I didn't know what they meant by, you know. I mean, it's, it's a lot of money for janitorial and, and kitchen supplies. Kitchen supplies is a very, very small percentage of it. Janitorial okay. supplies is the paper towels and the toilet paper, toilet paper uh, okay. hand sanitizer. It's, uh, it's uh, whatever equipment Dave's staff is using to Got do it. the day to day cleaning up of the place. Got it. Okay. Got it. That's five. 
speaking, before you jump to six, can I ask two questions? No, 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 we're, we're still on dose right now, doing five, okay. six, and seven. So, you know, as far as the group health goes, uh, I, I understand <clears throat> from the presentation that there was actually a decrease. Uh, but uh, my, in my opinion, I, I don't know what people pay employee-wise, but I, I would recommend there being, so, it, so in order for us to reduce the cost of the taxpayer, I would recommend there be an increase by the employees to pay for a bigger share of the cost for the, uh, for the health costs. You know, I, again, it's, it's about trying to cut back, you know, on costs for the taxpayers. We're, we're doing a great job. You have great material here in the library, and you're doing some great things. But, you know, at some point, you know, we can't, we can't be, uh, you know, I, I know in, in the business world, costs are, are people pay more for their health care costs than they're paying here. And I know in other government situations, they are paying a lot less than businesses are paying. And so that's my reasoning behind the, the concern. Uh, you know, there's certain other offerings within the, the benefits that, you know, I, I think that we should not be pay, paying for. I, I got to say, Dennis, you're saying an awful lot of things here that my staff are going to be hearing a board member say, and they're going to feel very much like this board member does not support the staff. Salaries here are I, far, far lower than in the business world, and you don't ever become a library worker for the big bucks. So some of these things, like having a reasonable, you know, amount of your health coverage paid, is part of what. And is an incentive for people to do this kind of work. I, but but you know, I, I just want to encourage I, you to feel, think I, that you I, are I, the I, boss of this staff people in a way, and this is going to make people very, very unhappy. I, I, I know people are unhappy because I get the stares when I come in the room and certain people are in the room. So I get those stares from the people who work here. So it, it is what it is. You know, I'm not here to be a, a friend to everybody. Well, you're killing the morale, and I don't have a problem with that. No. I'm, I'm here to be an advocate. An ambassador for, for the library. Yes, I am an ambassador for the library, and I'm all for paying for all those great items. I heard, you know, great. Hey, can we focus on Yeah, I know. You're looking to get done. Well, I want everyone to get an opportunity to ask questions on every page, and so we need to keep my moving and stay focused. I, I am. I'm very focused. I'm being okay. told by others that library people are going to hate me because I'm I'm looking to cut costs. All right. All right. So let's turn back to page. What was it? Six. He nine? was on six. six yes. Seven. I'm, 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 I'm still on six. Yeah, I wasn't even expecting to kind of rush through this. I prepared a lot of questions. I don't really think we're rushing through. We're going on three hours. Well, now. no, everybody else has said, no, I don't have anything. And that's what some I Some people have some Well, questions. you know what? We're and hearing mixed. stuff being answered. But the thing is, Dennis, and I'm not meaning to be insulting or I anything. Know. What I'm saying is, realistically, more so than asking questions, you're prepared going on about a lot of stuff that isn't asking the questions. You're giving your opinions. Well, and because and some I point understand you have these opinions, but right now we're looking to get our questions answered. Okay. So if you could just focus on the questions, okay. so at I some think point we'll are we be all debate? happier. We will when it comes at a later date, yeah, I sure. think. All right. Okay. All right. Sounds good. So that takes care of six. Um, again, gas, electric, and water, I, I looked at those, and I know in the business world there's a lot of uh, focus on go to green plans, trying to reduce things. Do we have a go to green plan here at the library? Um, what, what we have is a program uh, where uh, we're 
we're slowly converting uh, all of our lights to uh, LED, uh, replacing the chiller uh, should uh, depress uh, the uh, electric costs as uh, as well as you're installing 21 year old uh, or 21 year newer technology uh, that runs more efficiently. So uh, so yeah, um, okay. We've seen. Uh, we've seen electric and uh, other utility costs uh, as, a, as a whole stay uh, relatively uh, flat or decrease over the last uh, few years. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Okay, is that it? Uh, were we just going up to seven? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Right. Is that the one where it's going to cost us like 600 bucks per employee to sit in front of a webinar or participate in a, a webinar? It's a virtual course. And it's for how many employees? Um, it, well, I haven't decided for sure. Because <coughs> there are things that you can do in person and there are things that you can do remotely. And so it would depend on which things we decided to go with, but my tentative plan at this time is to, set, is to have five people do the course remotely. What's the course? It's, it's called the Virtual Lab, and it's about uh, working with your community, how to get information from your community, and try to get in sync with your community and their needs, and to be outward focused instead of always looking inward. Okay, this is, in, 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 was this what we talked about before, engaging with the different ethnicities and, and being That's able a piece to of it, yes. Yeah. Okay. That's a piece of it. So five people will be able to do this? Okay. That's quite expensive, but I, I think this is something that's recommended by ILA, isn't it? Uh, no, not particularly, well, maybe, it's but... It's on their website, isn't it? I, we it, talked it's, about it. It's on it, right? yeah, yeah. Okay. It's more from Skokie that I heard about it. Skokie okay. has done a lot with it. All right, and then, thank you. And then my next question is, professional collection, subscription costs for book reviews. Could you explain what that is for $8,250? Um, book reviews are, are like the magazine book list. Somebody like me will read a new book before it has come out and write a review of it, and then somebody here reads the review and decides if that's going to be a good choice for this library. So that's a piece of it, is a number of book review journals. There also is a database in that line that is one, uh, and that's actually more of the cost. It's called Gale Analytics, and it is um, it ties together with is it Experian? Yes. Yeah. It's the Experian database, so that we can learn more about our community and our card holders. And the work, okay. yeah, that's a, we used that some in the strategic planning, and we'll continue to use that. For oh, another great. Year. Okay. Well, that's a good explanation. So that's most of what's in there. All right, and then um, my last one is subscriptions and dues. For 8495 it says the library pays for dues to ALA and ILA. Correct. For the librarians and for the library. It costs us an additional $8,495 for individual memberships. Is that what that is? That's right. So that's actually in addition to the 35-8 that we're going to use for professional development. It is. Have we always paid for their individual membership? We have. It's a perk. You know, um, school districts have done away with that. If you want to go to a conference, um, the budgeted amount is not for the membership if you're not already a membership. I mean, is, is that something we don't even want to entertain? That's quite expensive. How many people for 8495 what do you think, wait, 
Not the whole library, right? No, it's just the librarians by and large. Oh, like those 26 yeah. number fours? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, all right, and then I did have a comment about trustee expenses. And I realized um, that the trustees go to places from time to time. But I think as trustees and representing the residents, maybe we could um, consider not necessarily traveling to ALA or ILA when it's, you know, it, it involves airfare and hotels, or, or maybe just do things locally, which just enhance our community knowledge. And we can certainly cut that down. I don't think it would affect any of us, but it would be some way for us to say, you know, why do we need to spend all that money? No, we don't need to go that far. Yeah, she did. A, a expense for travel. Oh, I did, and, and actually, after I went there, and I couldn't get Linda Ryan, our president, or Susan Lumpy to sit and discuss it so that we can take advantage of it. I don't see any reason to continue to do what? that. What? I have no yeah, idea what you're talking about. Oh, well, you, you, I, I can show so you all the documentation. But anyway, so, um, but if you want to keep flying to different places, go right ahead. There's, I, I no, see there was no benefit. Yeah, you did. But you went last year. But I'm saying there's no benefit to this library. So it's no benefit, to go. it was no benefit for you to go? No, they us. wouldn't meet with me to even discuss So you're the blaming it on other people that... No. Words into my mouth. Let's no, not make this a little no, five-year-old, you know, a little fat. Look, I mean, you traveled to a yeah. conference. Nobody yes, and my purpose was to take it's... the knowledge and share it right. with right. the two of them so we can utilize it in the library. Mm -hmm. Never happened. And I brought that up at a previous meeting. Well, all right. So if I you want to play me. like, let's be like teenagers fighting at school, continue. So embarrassing. This this whole board okay. is just amazing. Can we have go to I have any other notes? Now I'm now on page six. Next time just don't bring my name into something that no, is that's not exactly, correct. No, that's exactly. No, it is very true. Much. No, you forgot. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's, you forgot. Did not. Okay. Um, she's yeah. asking more questions. Oh, I'm sorry, did I miss something? No, I said yeah. this is, process is going much better than I imagined. It's typical for this board, I'll be honest with you there. It's better than last year. Okay, all right. I'm, I'm on page six, excuse me. What question do you have? Is Deferred compensation six? is favorable for 554000 but I think... I'm misunderstanding something. I thought there was a paragraph in this um, like dialogue, this synopsis. Uh, I think we're talking about employee fringe benefits, IMRF 6.305. And then it goes on to say overall operating expenses. Are you talking about something else, not IMRF? Because this number is 449. So am I mixing these two? I don't know what's... I'm trying to ascertain what we saved. It says the uh, 554000 yeah. is what we saved in deferred compensation. Oper this overall is not, um, this is a different category, and I'm just reading it wrong? Oh, I, think it's the, I think it is the whole category. Okay, so it's a completely different? It could be because it's called operating, right? Is that? Yeah, yeah. So it's it's going down the lines of the budget. Okay, it's just so we're on the wrong here. line. So right. yeah, the overall, the whole seven. thing. Okay, thank you. All right, that's that's okay. I just wanted to clarify that, and then um, and then just uh, piggybacking on Dennis's question about group health. What percentage do our staff members pay? They pay a portion, don't they? Yeah, single. Uh, Single coverage is a uh, 1090 split, 10% 10 to the employee, 90% to the library. Uh, above single coverage, family, spouse, etc., uh, that increment is uh, a 25 75 split, 25 to the employee, 75 to the uh, to the library. So is it just one family? Like it's not like a family of two. It's one rate, and then a family of. Well, the five. way that insurance works, um, health insurance works, is that they. They have family coverage. You can have 35 kids if, really? if that's how the way you're built, or you can have no kids or one kid, and it's the same price. Oh, is it? Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Well, great. Thanks. All right. That's all I have. Um, oh, FSA team. Mm -hmm. um, library's third-party administrator. Mm -hmm. Is that? Um, 
So we have someone else managing our um, flexible spending accounts? Oh, we do? Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that um, part of our payroll? Or? It's, it's a separate uh, entity, uh, FlexSource in uh, Elmhurst. And um, under the HIPAA rules, we have to take steps to protect private medical information. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, we have the employees uh, communicate directly with them. They have our summary plan description, and then they adjudicate the claims and uh, make decisions on what we need to pay and what we don't need. That makes sense. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, let's see. Um, I have nothing on page seven. Okay, all right. We'll go to page 18 then. All right, um, I'm going to start uh, with uh, Tim. Tim, do you have any question on page eight? One minute. I do not. Other than uh, observation, so the uh, special reserve building and equipment, those funds are uh, already, we already have funds and those uh, money's already put away. Yes. Yeah. Uh, approximately a million five. Right. Right. So um, if I can just follow up on that question right there. Uh, Greg, are these funds that we anticipated spending in the past but did not actually have an opportunity to spend yet? So what... Uh, uh, what, we do as, what we do as a practice is we survey the building periodically. Um, five years is about the right cycle. And we look at major uh, mechanical uh, systems uh, as well as the envelope. And we try to determine uh, what will need uh, maintenance in, in what kind of frame. Uh, the chiller, for example, was identified as something having, mm -hmm. at the time, uh, a five to eight year useful life. Um, and we're in, about, we're in year five of, of that of determination at this point, and now we're replacing the children. So, so did we anticipate taking that out of this year's budget? Well, we put, we put the amount to replace the children in the special reserve fund. Right, okay. Okay, and that's where that's what's what's holding that money, and that's where we'll pay for the children once, once we replace it. Okay, sorry. And I think and for did I cut you off? No, you're fine. But I think for everybody's information, once we put money in those funds, you cannot withdraw it for That's any right. other use. Right. So it's, 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 it's allocated and it's. Can I done. ask a question? Yes. So the 305000 that is because there's another, we realize there's more that actually has to be done, and that's, uh, mm -hmm. what, what is that? Oh, the difference? Yeah, the, we have the unfavorable. Okay. So, um, if you focus for a moment on uh, $428,000 from last year, that included the chiller and the painting and the coffee, uh, okay. three big items. Uh, we weren't able to do them, so we were putting them into this year's budget and rebudgeting and therefore reappropriating them so that we have uh, permission to spend that money mm -hmm. uh, with, you know, with the county. There's no, um, I mean, it, at the end of the day, we anticipate approximately a million five in uh, in repair expenditures in uh, the next ten years or something uh, along those lines. And those are including big ticket items like the roof and so forth. Mm -hmm. If we budget it and we don't spend it, or we have to spend it in the next year because of, of the timing of of uh, our request for our proposal, um, then there's there's no impact. I mean, that money stays there because we haven't spent it. It's still available for the projects. We just do it in another fiscal year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Tim? Yep. Were you done? I have done. Okay. Linda, do you have some questions on 8 or 9? Uh, no? Okay. All right. Carolyn, 8 or 9 questions? Um, Uh, at this time, I, I want to add that the audit expense and the various uh, insurance amounts, um, I'm, I'm continuing to work with our broker and to get uh, finalized pricing on it. Uh, we will probably see a bigger increase in workers' compensation because we have had some bad experience over the last few years where we've had some, you know, we've had some slips and falls and okay. things of that nature. Um, and of course, uh, insurance companies uh, don't care for claims and try to recoup all of their money. Mm -hmm. So our rate right. is going up, but we're taking it to market and and we're making sure that we can get the best price. And the problem, of course, is this that 
any insurer is going to want to look at your experience rate. Exactly. And so, but you know, so it's, we expect it to be higher. We just don't know how much at this point. Okay. Yeah, I remember um, you mentioning that last year somewhere. The same thing for liability insurance. Um, I don't have a final number from the um, from our auditors yet, so I used last year's number uh, in terms of uh, what the annual cost of the audit will be. So um, I'll I'll come back to the board with uh, better information. The statutory items are calculated, such as Social Security. It's calculated off of the uh, uh, payroll. Uh, unemployment compensation uh, is estimated based on uh, prior, prior year experience. Okay. Uh, Carolyn, did you have questions on either nine? Um, yes. Um, unemployment compensation, how long does that follow you? You know, for people who may have... Well, I guess if they're let go, they might be able to collect, but isn't it only for like a couple of years and that doesn't drop? I think the benefit runs for 26 weeks. No, are you and thinking about the, the calculation rate? of your rate? What you well, pay? Your cost, how? how? For unemployment compensation mm -hmm. that you have to pay to the state based on your prior claims? Yes. Yeah. That's an insurance policy. I, I, I don't know. So it doesn't change? I mean, it doesn't sure. change? Sure. If you fire a lot of people, then and they, call, and they all collect, then you have payouts that the state wants to recoup back into the fund. So from year to no year, question. that can affect you, but in a couple of years, no. I mean, at some point it goes away. I don't, I don't, know, I don't know what the horizon of that is. Oh, okay. All right, and then I had one question about... Um, it was... Oh, the auditor. Um, you talked about um, entertaining the idea of a new auditor, and I, I don't know why we have already asked this question. Because we have IMRF now, whatever the cost would be for a new auditor, it's pretty, is it? I mean, is it close in in cost, or is IMRF like such an additional task for them that that would be a reason for this to go up? Uh, last year uh, was the year of adoption, and anytime you adopt a new plan. Uh, like IMRF, there's extra steps that have to be performed to satisfy uh, to satisfy their uh, professional uh, need for uh, information so that they can render an opinion. Um, I I'm not sure what uh, I don't think that uh, an ongoing on an ongoing basis that those costs will be repeated. Oh, but, really? So. But I don't have I don't know if this number is high because we haven't let an RFP. I don't know if it's low, and you know, we're getting a deal. Uh, I don't know uh, what it, what they plan on charging us next year because I don't I, I haven't finalized it. Well, no, that's fine. I guess just the clarification I'm looking for. I know she mentioned because we have we now have IMRF that there would be an increase, but you're saying it was because it was the year of the adoption. But once IMRF was just part of who we are, that should subside. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what I needed. Okay. Um. Um. Oh, on page nine, nine capital expense. Mm -hmm. For some reason, I have IT. Mm -hmm. Cost of anticipated IT equipment repairs. Are the repairs separate from? Oh, this is considered part. This is building and maintenance, mm -hmm. but it's for IT. I thought all of IT's costs were under their budget. Well, we uh, Maybe I'm we pick up these costs in this particular category. So if somebody's monitor goes or in a keyboard or a mouse or they blow their motherboard or something like that, that's that's where all of these expenses go. So for replacing um, IT equipment, we don't we don't have another line item for that. When we uh, replace all of the. Uh, we replace large chunks of mm -hmm. our IT infrastructure, oh, nice. and that comes out of special reserve. Okay. And right. we just did that, I don't know, two years ago, I think, or maybe three. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago. No. no. Okay, I understand this now. All right, well, thank you. Okay, good. Hey, um, just uh, looking to clarify, I, I noticed fi furnitures and fixtures. Uh, page. Uh, page uh, 9. Uh, I'm assuming that you know, we, we budgeted for 
35 some odd thousand dollars for furniture and, and use that money this year. And I'm assuming from what I'm seeing that we're looking at another 44,000 for fixtures and furniture again in the coming year. And uh, I just wanted to make sure those were the numbers. I don't want to give an opinion on anything. I just want to make sure those are the numbers. We didn't really spend that much this, this past year. I mean, maybe we push those expenses up forward till next year because we didn't. Have, I understand. We didn't really spend that much in this fiscal year for furniture or furnishings. Uh, you're going to make me spend eleven thousand uh, three hundred and thirty-six dollars, uh, and uh, projecting to spend fifteen uh, one fifteen one fifteen against the budget of thirty-five seven forty-three. For a favorable one result of twenty thousand six hundred twenty-eight. It's on page five okay. of the seven column uh, of the seven, seven column uh, spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. okay. Great. This is that statement is confusing to me because here it shows it's a negative. Yes. Yeah. So uh, we're comparing budget of uh, seventeen eighteen to the budget of nineteen uh, eighteen nineteen. And when there's a negative in the uh, in the third column, mm -hmm. that means that for expenses the budget has increased. Okay. Okay. So that's why you see a negative number okay. there. Okay. So if we look at page five of the uh, seven column page, it looks like we project that we'll spend about fifteen thousand on furniture this year, uh, not not anywhere close to our thirty-five thousand dollar budget amount. Did we push some? Uh, are we postponing some? Furniture expenses into next year to the next fiscal year. That's some of us. Yeah. You know, sometimes uh, the request changes in the draft, and maybe they add something else because something has uh, changed in their, uh, you know, in the way that they're running the department. I'm willing to take another look at that line before we meet again. See if we really need yeah. to spend that much. Uh, you know, obviously, again, before you buy anything that costs more than five thousand dollars, we have to approve it. Anyway. But maybe we can take that down a bit um, based on what we spent this past year. I don't, I don't know. But if we really did postpone some big furniture po uh, purchases up, we may need that in the next year's budget. But if you could take a look at that, that would be great. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, Dennis, I think you were um, looking at 8 and 9. Did you have more questions? Uh, and on 9, just repair and improvements, uh, $60,000. I'm assuming that we're we're doing something that's not within like the special reserve, but I'm, I'm not sure. Is that stuff that you were, were talking about in the presentation, or um, yeah? So um, you know, we have all sorts of things. There's all sorts of moving parts around here, and uh, for example, when we when we uh, replaced a lot of the uh, parts. And the compressor last year, uh, the chiller up on the roof, uh, amount to about forty thousand dollars or thereabout. Um, it came out of that line. So we have, um, you know, we have uh, 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 three boilers. We have the chiller on the roof. We have um, two very large air handlers uh, that you could walk through, um, and. Uh, not to mention, uh, we uh, are always looking at the roof and uh, making spot repairs to make sure that we extend its life. Uh, the, that's all the kinds of activities that go in, uh, in that area. And that wouldn't come out of capital, so that, or, or whatever, I don't forget what it's called, that. it wouldn't come out of that. Special, special reserve. reserve? No. Special reserve is, is not for incidental repairs, it's for you know, larger uh, projects. More so when we, yeah, so when we replace the roof, um, and we have to spend, I don't know, two or three hundred thousand dollars on a section, or, or eight hundred thousand dollars on the whole thing, uh, it'll come out of uh, special reserve. Okay. Anything else, Dennis? No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay, Patty. Any questions? Okay, fine. 
Uh, we've now both gone through the budget. We'll return to uh, what we discussed earlier, and that is some specific requests for information from Carolyn. I uh, just want to remind the board that it's been a policy in the past that if any individual board member wanted to call up Susan and ask a question that required that uh, you know, involved giving a fairly short answer, they were welcome to do so. However, when it came to spending additional time, particularly when it came to preparing new documents, uh, that that required consensus of the board in order to direct Susan or any other staff members to take that action. So we've had three requests tonight from Carolyn. One was uh, information regarding online programs. Susan has already volunteered to provide that. So that leaves two other requests. Uh, Carolyn asked for a list of all books that would be purchased during the coming year uh, that would come out of the line items for adult and children books, as I, as I recall. Uh, Library material. Okay, all right. Then I have a show of hands. Now, again, this is not a formal vote, but rather this was just indicating a consensus or lack thereof for, to require Susan to provide this information that's been requested by Carolyn. Uh, can I show a show of hands as to who wants to require uh, Susan to prepare a list of all books to be purchased during the coming year for the adult and children's uh, volume. That wasn't my request. All right, well, what exactly is your request then? My request was a list of what's going to be purchased by those line items since they already have dollar amounts, not just two. So it's much more than what you're asking for. Okay. Well, what is it then? So, so what's the I want list? library materials by line item. So There's you're asking for the page. list of all books for all well, Whatever's on library materials. On that page, I'm asking for a list of what will be purchased for those line items under library materials. All right. All right, I'll, I'll just... So we'll start casting the future. Uh, we're asking Susan to do that. I'm asking Susan to do that. Yeah, okay, all right. So uh, just in terms of... Uh, let's go around the room. Tim, I do... No? Linda? Okay. Uh, no? Yes? No? Sure. What, was that a yes or no? Yes. yes. Okay. No? Okay, fine. All right, we are not asking uh, staff to prepare that. The other request was... So can I just know that at the beginning of the meeting, I'm just trying to recall what that request was. That was... Well, this is staff by department. Uh, yes. Towers, yes. the total amount they would be paid. Yes, yes, yes. Um, that's correct. Isn't that, Carolyn? Isn't that Carolyn? Staff by department. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Uh, and I would... So no in terms of requiring that uh, document to be created. Tim, Linda? No. Yeah. Okay, Dennis, Parker, Zoom, yes. Dennis, yes. No. And? No. Okay. All right, fine. So um, I think uh, we have come to the end of the proposed budget here in terms of questions. I would We've like to make a comment, with the please. Request. I'm sorry, Carolyn, yes? I would like to make a comment before you conclude. All right, what is your comment? Um, in terms of my request for information, uh -huh. it really has no bearing on any of the other trustees. As an elected trustee, I'm requesting this information of the data or whatever particular information I requested so I can have a better understanding of what you're doing with the budget dollars. We have a very blanket budget presented to us tonight, and I ask for details. It's really not a decision up to the other board members. That's my request. And you should be able to provide me whatever I need to better understand how we're spending our money. I so it I is a board decision. It is a board decision as to how the staff is required to spend their time. There's no one individual thank board member that can okay, require thank you for that. staff members to prepare uh, documents that would normally not be prepared for all staff okay, members. Okay, and then secondly, since everybody can't wait to run out of here because it's only a seven million dollar budget. You commented, or was it Susan who commented, that um, Dennis was making cuts or some recommendations for cuts that would increase costs on the employees. You have refused to provide any information and give us a better understanding of how we staff our departments. And yet, when we try to make suggestions, you say that it's going to upset staff who constantly 
prevent information from being dispersed amongst us? How are we supposed to understand what it costs to run these departments? And I honestly, I don't believe that one set of eyes is enough. I can't get any justification. So you say staff's going to be upset with us if we recommend cuts. If I have no idea what you're doing or how you're utilizing all of these people, of course it looks quite exorbitant. We spend a lot of money on staff, but you don't help us better understand department usage. Do you have a recommendation? I already asked for, I, I made my request, and you have rejected them. So since, and I've already heard comments from other trustees, the reason they're against allowing me to get programming information is because they're afraid it's going to result in cuts in staffing. It has nothing to do with that. Okay, but you don't have a right to deny, I didn't say you said it. But I'm saying your, your, your attitude about withholding information, giving us a budget that is extremely general for $7 million is really not the way to expect us to vote to approve it. You need details, and you refuse to provide that to us. All right, did anyone else have any comments that they wish to make at this time? Just what, what, yes, what's yes. the next steps on that? Uh, the next step is our next board meeting, which is uh, two weeks from today, two weeks from today. And right. we're going to do what at that uh, point? The uh, passage of the potential uh, tentative, uh, tentative uh, budget is on the agenda. We actually have a hearing um, scheduled usually at 6.30. I think it was usually 6.30. We have the public hearing scheduled. Is this that correct? Be a That's in June. Meeting. Yeah, the tentative approval. The oh, wait a minute. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm, is, I'm confusing it. In right. So it's the June meeting. There will be the public hearing. Okay, great. So I stand corrected. We have a meeting. On uh, March, our next meeting. Our next meeting. Our next meeting. We look at the tentative budget again. Uh, adapt the tentative budget. I, I do call it adopting. I think we call it adopting the tentative mm -hmm. budget. Um, and then it is um, put in the newspaper, right? Or the, oh, the, notice. The, the, the notice is put in the newspaper yeah. that the hearing will be coming up. And the hearing is at the beginning of the June meeting. And anyone can come to that and you know, participate in that meeting or also you know, give public comment at either next meeting or the, next, or the June meeting. And then typically we would vote on the budget at the June do, meeting, do, as I recall. Do, at the next meeting, would we talk about possible inclusion or exclusion of certain things? Is uh, this part of it? That's part of the potential part of, part of the discussion, right? right? You know, we do schedule this extra meeting, which we had tonight, to yeah. sort of go over to the minutiae of it. Yeah. Uh, but that's not to say that you can't ask questions of staff members between now and the next yeah, meeting. Yeah, no, I, I, or I have questions meeting. answered. I just, you know, we've got this Or budget. if you wish to make comments, you can do that too, of course. Yeah. And can you change it? Yes. Uh, at the next well, we haven't voted yeah. for the budget, so right. yeah, we can uh, change. change. That's what you change. want to know. Yeah, right. Thank you. Right. Okay. I, I sometimes I'm not clear. The next meeting is a regular meeting. Right. It's, it's just a regular monthly meeting. Right. So we have two more bites at the apple. We could make. Uh, we could suggest changes at the next uh, meeting, and yeah. could also suggest changes um, on the uh, at the June meeting. Okay. Uh, just before passage, and then yeah. we'll pass with the other. I would suggest if you're, you know, if you're going to make suggestions, make it earlier rather than later, because yeah, then our staff has to redo yeah, the budget, yeah, yeah. and uh, we like to, uh, you know, make sure that we do it at the June meeting before our fiscal year starts for eighteen nineteen. Perfect. Anything else that uh, we need to just sort of refresh people's memory as to the next steps in the budget process? I think that's pretty much it. Okay. All right. Do you have a motion to adjourn? Patty? Second. Second. By Linda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.